The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay the Red Santee, host of Turnbuckle Tabloid. And as you know, here on our show, we are big fans of music. Pop, R&B, reggae, rock, whatever have you, we love to play it here on the show. But what we want to play is your music. And how can we do that? So you guys want to take and share in our Patreon. Ladies and gentlemen, go to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. And just... Give us a small donation, and we would love to share your music on our show. Whether you're an artist, you're a singer, you're a rom, you're a producer, whatever it is that you guys do in the field, we want to share your music to the masses and our hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of listeners and viewers and followers. So make sure you go to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Terminal Tabloid and be a part of our show as much as we want to be a part of sharing your talent. So hope to hear from you guys soon and enjoy the show. Hey, this is Jordan Oliver and you're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. Turnbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. So this season, it doesn't help that it's like allergy season, and then fucking, I, 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 the masks that we wear is fucking up my eyes. I, I, my dad is dead with the allergy, son. Oh my god, it's just killing me, and it's almost like everybody thinks you have COVID now because you, you, you're sneezing, and your nose is running, and your eyes are fucking itchy. And he's like, no, it's fucking allergy season. And these masks don't fucking help either. Nope, nope. Oh. Uh, it's I'm at it's, home uh, and I'm rubbing my fucking eyes like if I got I'm, I'm walking through a pollen laden garden or some shit. Jesus. And you know, I always thought I always thought allergy season wasn't bad like in the winter. I always thought it was when like the leaves were falling and like the pollen's around, but I guess it's bad all year round at, at this point. For, like my dad is just like miserable. I swear uh, I look like a, a three year old that's fighting to go to sleep. Like, like trying not to yeah. go to sleep. You you're, know try, you're, you're trying to you're trying to listen to mom's bedtime story, but you're tired. Yeah, and you're just like you keep rubbing your eye. You tired? I'm not tired. I'm not tired. Many oh, questions. It's, fun. It's, it's annoying, but yeah, this is the season to be jolly, ladies and gentlemen. If the if if you're walking past a Spanish person's household, they're playing uh, salsa Domino's. or merengue, and coquito is a flowing, and it Domino's. is dominoes. Domino, well, yeah, dominoes are probably being played. The fichas we call them in in, in the Spanish culture. Fichas we call the them. Fi- the fichas. Somebody's yelling "capicu," and the the air is wafting with the smell of a penil and pasteles, ladies and gentlemen. I had pe- I had I had I had penny on Christmas Eve. Oh, you did, sir. I my uh my uh my aunt my aunt. And I went over the I went over the family's house for Christmas, and believe me, we were the, no 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 no. If you went to the family's house, you you're white. That means you had a uh, roasted pork shoulder. That's what you I had. had. Yeah, sorry, roasted pork shoulder and tuna salad casserole. You had the casserole. Uh, did it have grapes in it or raisins? Raisins. It had uh, raisins. Not, in it? bro. Surprisingly, um. My family, technically, they're not they're not blood related, but like my mom's best friend, we call family. Uh, they're 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 from Spain. Oh, okay. So, so we got the penny, the rice, we got the um the um, the fucking the thing, the, the tamales. I the think. tamales, yeah. The, the sweet plantains. I was mad hype, son. You know, I dogged Christmas Eve dinner, and then I went back to being white and had lasagna on Christmas. Of Day. course. Hey, listen, I did too. I went in and then. Spent the holidays with with, 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 with with other family, and they had lasagna, and hell. I, and you dogged it. I, I, fucking yeah, damn right it went down the gullet. You fucking right. <laughs> Lasagna's good, bro. I mean, uh, uh, my question is, what are, you, what are you cooking anything special for New Year's? No, I cooked for Christmas. I did my I did my usual. I didn't do as much as I do on Thanksgiving. I did a penne. I did um baked macaroni and cheese. Ooh, I did uh I ham. Did that in my belly. Yeah, and um 
did you know the rice and the potato salad, but I didn't you know I didn't go all out like I usually do. So I, I I was just chilling. Like I said, it's just usually it's a bigger group that you're sending out to because yeah, 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 no, no, like COVID. The, nah, no, not even that. It's just because because Christmas I just toned it down. Thanksgiving is when I go off because that's my that's my um forte. That's the that's the food holiday. So yeah, but no, it's you know Christmas kind of comes around. A lot of holidays here. You know, I'm always very. Uh, Anti-holiday, I, I get. Uh, I know that's the, why. That's why. Like, I was like, I, I'm not gonna hear anything from record. This guy, it's more like, uh, eh, I'm here for the food. Not even that. It's not even I'm here for the food. I just it's like, hey, I take every day like a regular day. But you know, for for Christmas and you know, certain holidays, you you kind of get like a little something for it. I mean, because you know, you, especially if you have a kid, you get excited for them, and then you see other people get excited. I've never been to one, you know, because you see Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and everybody's dressing the same. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, I, I never, I never got into that. It was just like, you woke up, opened up your presents, and you fucking put shit together, and then you went back to fuck to sleep. That's what the fuck it was. But, you know, it's just, now it's it's a little different. I, I, I see, especially now with how this year was, Oh, I get it now. I don't understand why people are fucking wanting to be with each other and all that shit. I mean, you know, uh, as much as people want to go at, uh, to a million people's homes and celebrate. No, please, year, I don't do need. That. I don't need to see thirty motherfuckers in a house. That's different. That shit is crazy. Let's keep I, that to a limit, ladies and gentlemen. And, and, and it's funny because people I message go, "Oh, like you're very family oriented." I'm like, I have no family. What are you talking about? And like, I, I, <laughs> last time I was in a family of. Of, last time I was in a room of thirty people with family, it was like I was at my ex's house. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't. That wasn't my family. Uh, like, I just, uh, you know, you know how I am. I think I, I, I like staying to myself. I like doing what I gotta do. I like coming downstairs, getting some food, having a little conversation, and then watching some SmackDown. I don't want to do anything else. It's not my vibe. Yeah, this was the year that we didn't go to family's house. We, uh, we stayed away, and it's like we've been staying away from family for the longest, but. It's not because of COVID. It's because that's what we usually do sometimes. Well, now, now, now COVID is the excuse. Yeah, exactly. COVID is the excuse now. We, we just like, you know, tongue in cheek and this shit. No, but we, uh, uh, Super Producer and I went to uh, a friend's, friend's house for for uh, for their family's holiday. And there's Very nothing nice. like going to somebody else's house for fucking holidays, festivities, and just seeing a dynamic of their household. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like... When um, when it's kind of like when you watch Jurassic Park and you you're waiting for something to happen while you're riding through the fucking the jeep, and you're oh, hoping God. to see dinosaurs pop up and nothing happens. Nothing. And, and all, all of a sudden, you get the one footstep. And then all of a sudden, the electricity goes out and the fucking T Rex pops up and it goes. There we go. That's the party we were waiting for. <laughs> Right, disappointed in the beginning, but then it goes, oh. And it's like, yeah, this is when it kicks into high gear, ladies and gentlemen. But no, right. we, we had a we had a good time. You know, we we know somebody else's uh, did, did, did Santa did Santa treat you well? Santa Santa was was okay this year. Santa actually was like, um, he was vaccinated by the way. He was good to go. Yeah, yeah. There was like you, there was some, you know, people. You know, when 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 people know you. And buy you specific things because they know you. That's when it's special. It doesn't have to be the most expensive things. You know, people no, are like the it's glitz not about and glamour. That. Yeah, people always consider like the glitz and glamour. But if they know you, and they buy you certain things, it's like that's when it hits home, and you're like, "This is why I fuck with you." You know what I'm saying? I, that's I, how you I, tell I, people. I, I I love the gifts where it's like, "Oh wow, she listened." I brought it up once, like two weeks ago, and I didn't even bring it up in a light in a, an amazing way. Like I fucking, I didn't even bring it up. Od and the fact that they remember and think about me. Yeah, that, I I love those kind of gifts, the ones that like surprise me and going, "Wait a minute, how do you know I like that shit?" You listened. Yeah, I have a I have a sister aunt. It's my it's my aunt that I consider my sister, you know, because we're kind of close to age, but you know, she we were raised so tight to with each other, and um, I'm not gonna say what she does for a living, but she has a um. What the fuck was that? That was uh, that was Santa. Oh, Santa! <laughs> he says, he's like, there's no retain, there's no return exchange for that gift you got. So that enjoy your ugly socks. No, um, so she, she 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 did she was part you know she was part of a toy drive. So you know, someone of that like that kind of thing, not a toy drive, right, but you know, a toy right. giveaway for kids. And she calls me. She goes, listen, um, we have two Funko Pops here. They have the Rafiki uh, Lion King, and they have the Buzz Lightyear and Woody um, combo 
Hey, Rafiki. All right. Do you want it? And I was like, fuck yeah. Hold that for me. <laughs> Wait, so, who had Rafiki? Uh, I, I, I told you. I, I, my, 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 Santa? My, my, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. The Santa aunt sis. That's the one I had it. That's you got. Oh, got man. It. So I was like, oh, yeah, I don't have that shit. Bring, don't toss that shit over here. No, they, right. they just like people just know you. They just know like the shit you're into. So I, of course. So I always I always appreciate that. And then plus, we were talking about it last week where we, we talked about uh when we give gifts to people and it's like ah hey, whatever you know I I I never really take in consideration because I always think of myself as a bad gift giver. Why? Because I'm so I I I don't really pay attention to what someone would like see with me when it, let's say for like for kids for kids i'm easy i just be like yo dear, take fucking money or gift card like you know you just give it away like yesterday i was walking around the, the, you know the, the the friend's house and i was just like i saw kids i was like here take five dollars take five dollars you know i was just giving Are money you kidding up. me you threw five dollars at them yeah man because you know I'm, come that's, on that's man. the kind You're of to put it in a car i'm like You're a weird it. first of all all right let's come let's on, let's son. cut Let's hey, the, here, if I take here at your wallet, that is such okay, a Christmas okay, thing to do. Okay, okay, wait a minute. Let's cut the bullshit about cards, all right? Let's be honest here. <laughs> that shit is nothing but wasted fucking paper that's going to go in a fucking not, garbage. And for like, some people, for some for, people. For a lot of people, sir. My, my, my mother collects a lot of cards. Oh I, know people, my. I know my friends who collect the cards. You guys the mean, are. The ones that because, mean the most. The ones that mean the most. Because you're no white. Writing. Because you're no, white. No, that's not true. That's you know how many true. kids. I know people. Listen, I collect. I, I keep the cards that have that people write in it that mean a lot to me. Like. For instance, shout out to shout out to Katie. She gave me an amazing card this year for Christmas, and I'm saving it because she wrote a fucking million paragraphs in it, and it means a lot to me what she said. If it's a regular card with a fucking picture in it, I'm, of course I'm not gonna keep it. But if it's like a one that has a really memorable uh, meaning meaning to what's inside, I'll keep it. You always mean much more to me than you can ever guess. You no, fill my no, life with more, more so than that. That, fill that, my that, life and it's it. so complete with love and happiness. It's like like I, got, like I got a card from Drew McIntyre this year actually. Oh, uh, listen, I, I and, and and I opened it up. And you're Drew's a lucky gonna, prick if you a lot do. Of things. Then when you open up the card, I'm like, <laughs> yo, he, he, he yo, he told me he would not claim more me in the face. No, so, like, I, I gotta keep it. He was like, listen, Matthew. No, I heard you were on the noise list. <laughs> well. I claim more Santa in the dick, and now you're getting what you wanted. Like it, it, that meant a lot to me. So I'm gonna I felt like it. I felt like Drew was in the room right now when he did that. He basically was. Yo, listen, bro. Drew's all around us. Drew is Santa Claus. <laughs> he is Drew's, Santa Claus. It's Saint Nick. Drew Saint Nick. The, so. Scot the Scottish Santa. <laughs> it's like it's, the Santa psychopath, <laughs> Drew McIntyre. <laughs> No, like, I, I mean, we, come on, let's be we, for real. We, we, me and Drew even played Warzone together, son. Like, let's, come on, come man. on, let's be for real. Nobody fucking keeps these cards, bro. These are just this is wasted paper, honestly. I, All right, I, so now I know I'm never giving you a card ever. You're doing me a favor, <laughs> sir. You are never. doing me a favor. Whenever, like, you, know, you, know they, you know how they say in Howard Stern when like someone says something and Howard goes, "Okay, okay, okay, I will never do this for you again." Look at me, I will never give you a card again. No, oh, you know, you know, now I'm gonna give you a card to piss you off. No. <laughs> <laughs> listen, and let's let's be for real. Okay, if it's someone who went or, or, or you know, if there was something of, of, uh, of an emotional attachment that went to this car that went all out, and like you said, Katie wrote something you know prolific the whole, and, the whole inside and enduring. Was covered. That's beautiful. Of course, you're gonna keep that. An, an, an asshole would throw that away. I get that, but a card that just says. From such and such to such oh, and such. Oh, that's going in the garbage. That's but that's my point. This is what I'm telling you. Most cards are like that. Well, Those yeah, are absolutely. trash. But you get, but actually, but you get a rare one where they put a lot of thought into it. The the card inside is full of like yo. Katie filled the inside up of words, and it had to do with our fitness journey this year. It had to do with our our ups and downs about relationships. It was a very personal card, so I'm gonna keep it. That, that, but that's understandable. But any other card, that's what, 90, yeah, that's what, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Ninety-seven percent car of the cars, other cars going to the fireplace. Ninety-seven percent of cars go in the fucking garbage. The fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> they become kindling. And that's okay. And I, you know what? I, I feel like the people who use those cars are happy that it's being repurposed and reused. Well, uh, fucking right? Hallmark is the quintessential company that gets over on any fucking Killing season. Killing trees. Because they kill trees and they make buku millions and billions of dollars off of that shit. 
I get my mom the annual Snoopy card. <laughs> and she, but she keeps those, right? She loves Snoopy, so that's why. Okay, she keeps those. Yeah. That's her favorite thing. She how, many, keeps cards. how many times have you were a kid that someone put a card on their present and you didn't even look at the card and your mother had to remind you, Matthew, look at the card. Someone look what, what, All the time. Look, 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 I exactly. the money to drop and there you was no didn't money. You give a fuck about what was in it. You fucking well, shook the card to shout see out what... to my Shout out to my coworker who's age 21 years old. Gave her a Starbucks gift card and I wrote something in the card and she automatically opened it and chucked the card on the floor and grabbed uh, the Starbucks gift card if... and said, yes, bitch, yes, bitch. Of I'm course, like, uh... you see, I, you see, this is what I'm telling you. And, I... and by the way, I want to add, that was the coworker nobody likes and I went <laughs> <laughs> my way to do, I went out of my way to give her a gift because I didn't want to leave her out. And this bitch opened the card and automatically threw her on the floor and said, "I'm getting my macchiato, bitch! I'm getting my macchiato, bitch!" I'm like, "All right, fuck you." And the the lesson of that story is, um, don't fucking be nice to people. <laughs> <laughs> I even on the car. I was like, "Listen, I appreciate you being here. Like, I'm happy that we work together as a team." And she didn't even read none of that shit. Those I, words were irrelevant. I tell you, I I'm telling you. But I, I, so yeah, I'm that kind of guy that walks around when it comes to kids, and I throw the money or whatever the case may be. And, and, and you know, that's, and right, <laughs> even though the person I was with at the at their house, they was like, "The fuck is wrong with you?" I was like. Come on, I'm like that uncle that does that shit. At least I'm not telling them to go into my pocket and, and look for change. I'm like, at least I'm giving the money. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing something. I, oh I, I, my god! What? You had an uncle like that? No, I just <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to cut you off. I, WWE just announced a new a new series on the network, and they literally just stole Twitch's idea. Um, I, 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 it's wrestling rundown information, so I'm not gonna spoil it. But oh, okay, save that. Let's which, just say they made their own gaming channel. Oh, which by the way, shit. Thanks for reminding me. I gotta put something on the on the, on the notes as well. Um. So yeah, oh, I, that, that that blew me out of proportion. That blew me away. I, saw I can't fucking believe this. I saw something come up and I totally forgot about putting it on the notes. Um. So yeah. So other than that, the 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 experience of being in other people's households because usually it's in my, I'm with my family, and it's like. You already know who. Usually, when I go with my family, depending on how much alcohol is in the house and what's actually going on in the house, it sets the barometer of when I'm leaving. It gives me the idea of like, well, yeah, I might be here for an hour and a half, or I might be here for three, or I might just be out of here in twenty minutes. Depends on what well, it is. Well, that's me tonight, so I'll keep you updated with time I'm, I'm out. <laughs> but other than that, welcome everybody to another episode of. Turnbuckle Tabloid. I'm your host, Mr. Ear to the Mat, the king of talk style, and as always, the cheap thrill, Jay the Red Santa. And I am the Mook with the mic. I am the Funko Hub, Marowski. Make sure you check us out on all the social media outlets. Check us out on the like group page on Facebook. Also, make sure you check us out on the group page because we are giving you guys the opportunity to nominate for this year's Tabby's Awards, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you guys ain't shit. I can't stand you motherfuckers. It's 770 fucking followers of the page. And you guys can't vote. Wow. Right. So, you know wow. What, and, 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 you, know, you, know, you know the funny part is they're going to be pissed when that person they want to win didn't win. They're like, what happened? I'm like, you didn't vote. <laughs> What's the point? So make sure you check us out there as well. More categories coming up. Uh, I'm going to say not this week, but the following week. We will most likely have the Tabby Awards. That's what it'll be looking at. We'll be locking it up. Uh, so make sure you check us out there. Check us out on Instagram at Turnbuckle Tabloid Podcast, as well as on Twitter at Turnbuckle Tab. And the, ho the host will be Donald Trump, by the way. He should be. He, he by that time, yeah. Either that, or he'll still be bitching about fucking whether or not he won the election. We won by an outstanding amount of votes. Outstanding amount. You fucking douchebag. I'll, I'll, real. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute Also be sure you check us out on Anchor, YouTube uh, And on um, uh, Oh my god oh, TikTok <laughs> on Turbo Tabloid as well We've been rolling out stuff slowly Here and there listen it, it, I'm, I'm only one man Oski's only one man We're doing our best to, to Just try to cover all the social media outlets But we're doing everything as possible as we can So it, they're coming out ladies and gentlemen Slowly but surely they, they they come out on social media Just look at the you main know what? Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I give more stuff to you If you'd fucking care <laughs> Do I want Do I have to go on my yearly rant Alright <laughs> next Coming maybe. soon ladies and gentlemen Coming soon yeah, Honestly rant. 
on our state of wrestling address coming soon. Uh, I know the state of our fucking viewers. <laughs> That's what that is. But I will appreciate you guys who have been downloading, streaming, and subscribing to our podcast at all the uh, podcasting outlets: Spotify, right. Google Play, uh, iHeart, uh, Amazon Music. And even Audible, all you guys who are partaking in those numbers are going up immensely, increasing every week. And I believe ever since we split to the two episode per week uh, format, it's been I, I, I've gotten great feedback from that. People have yeah, been telling no, me, dude, it's way better. It's like, uh, like I mentioned, Good Dad Angel said, yo, ever since ever since you guys went to, to, to two episodes, it's been much better. It makes my day, my weeks go better, uh, and it doesn't feel like I have to wait. Hey, you guys are there all the time. This week, ladies, and speaking of that, this week you'll get bonus episodes. This week, not only would you get the other, um, the other part of the episodes of the week, you're also going to get the best of 2020 this week as well. You get the best of of uh, what went down on Turbo Tabloid for the year, and we'll be covering episode uh, uh, interviews and conversations we have with guys like Teddy Hart, uh, Daniel Garcia, um, uh, Calvin, Calvin Tankman. Tankman. Uh, uh, we, well, we had tons. Casey, Casey Armstrong from from Howard stuff. We had tons of guys who uh, came in this week and had we conversations. Work, work COVID. We and work, and we had COVID. a female, which we had. We finally were able to ask a question we've been dying to ask. We had Ariella Nix who stopped in as well. So uh, take uh, take a listen to that this week. You guys be able to catch up, get some snippets on on those uh, conversations as well. So um, make sure you check, keep your ears out for that. But if you can't go to those podcasting outlets or you just struggle with, uh, I don't know how to work this fangled Spotify thing, then go to RageWorksNetwork.com. That's where you have all the RageWorks family and their podcasts. Spot, call me when it's over. Black is the New Black, Toys and Text. Um, of course, uh, Trek Untold and we here at Turbo Tableau. You can cover, you can watch us there and listen to us there as well. And as always, check out the family at RageWorks. Dot net rageworks.net has all the articles pertaining to all the things that are relevant and what's going on in our culture and that culture we are talking about is pop culture movies video games tv shows comic books is all covered there on our family page at rageworks.net rageworks.net rage we do it for the culture baby pop culture that is so um we uh, stumbling out of the blocks just quickly. We 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 purchased um Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. I did it on console. You did it for for PC. We got it for PC. Yep. Uh, just a quick comparison. I stopped playing about fifteen minutes in the game, maybe fifteen twenty minutes <laughs> a game. Not because I had crashes or anything. Not because of that. But I heard everybody else was having problems with it. And I said, right. you know what? I'm going to wait until the patches are being rolled out. They already set out, I think, two patches this week on console. Yeah, they're, Excuse they're, they're, me, they're on console. Quick. Yeah, they came out. But the major patches are going to be coming out on console in January and in February. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold off on them and catch up on the other stuff that I wasn't able to catch up on. Uh, and I also still want to get into Fuser because I am I fucking I, I'll put, Yeah, Fuser's great. I played it today. Oh, you did? You got it? I bought it on PC because it was it was on sale. So. Oh, fucking great! Uh, isn't it's it a fun I, game? I, 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 it's great. It's awesome. I'm playing that shit like I'm, I'm a DJ on my on my desk with my fucking monitors and shit. I'm like walking. Around, I'm doing all my shit. Right. It's just fun so um, I, I stopped playing, but like I said, I haven't gotten any problems with the Cyberpunk 2077. How do you have? How has it been on your on PC? It's great. It's great. Not a single, um, not a single law in terms of uh bugs i haven't had a bug yet uh the graphics are, f are absolutely phenomenal it's smooth but i will say uh gameplay wise it's hard <laughs> that's it's what she hard. said that's it's what she overwhelming. said overwhelming it's overwhelming there's just so much stuff that i need to go on youtube and look up cyberpunk for dummies uh because i honestly have no idea what the fuck is going on the game's great um, holy shit! Like you could, you make fucking calls on your phone, on your on your arm. Uh, the, um, the gameplay is just outstanding. Yeah, speaking while, of, while speaking working, of, it's great. Speaking of which, I did, I did a what? what uh, that's what she said. Reference. I did an office. Did you you see my shirt on on? Uh, oh uh, yes, the <laughs> office. I knew it was the office. I fucking knew it. I, I didn't see I didn't see it from afar, but I fucking I fucking knew it, bro. Yeah. Um. I watched that episode last night. <laughs> so. Um, you, you're not, well, you, 
I, I figured you play Fallout, so you kind of would have an idea of how the game would be. Like, with, yeah, like, but Fallout's like kindergarten, and Cyberpunk is like fifth grade. It, it, it's like Fallout's like there's you have four items to pick up, and there's a linear story. This game is a giant world where it's like, okay, do what you want, but you have to stay on course. There's 45 things to pick up in each room. It, it is like the only thing that I can tell you, it's it's Fallout meets Witcher Three, but you never really played Witcher Three. Yeah. No, um, I it's Fallout meets Witcher 3 and don't stay on the course of the main game. It's okay to Oh no, I'm going to, I'm going to do side missions. No, do a lot out. of side missions. Do a lot yeah. of side missions. I was told to do that, but yeah, I will. Don't I will. and do a lot of uh uh um police calls. Do a lot of those to you you'll, yeah, you'll pick nah, up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna you'll get a lot my, of legendary uh, weapons that way. Well, so. in this game, in this game, you got to get your street crit up. Right. So I'm, by doing the side mission and stuff, so I'm, I'm gonna work on getting my which, street um, crit which, up. Which which class did you pick? Um, out of the three, I chose the one in the middle. Um, Was street it street kid, st street kid. Yeah, I yeah, yeah I, I did, kid. I did too. AJ chose street kid. I think everyone I know chose street kid. Yeah, it's, just, it's uh, really cool. I, it, it, like I said, it's um like I said, I'm I'm gonna catch up on some stuff. You know, I got a couple of days off this week from work, so I could um catch up on a couple of things and just tussle around. I gotta I gotta. It's funny because I I go and people are telling, me, did you fin did you watch the Mandalorian yet? And I'm like, no, uh, shut the fuck up, don't tell me shit, shut up. I've been able to avoid things. Leave me alone. See, did you see I got Grogu for Christmas? Yeah. My, 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 my mom posted on Facebook the right. video of. I got a Grogu a Grogu hoodie. It's fucking cool as shit too. Fuck, which by the way, yeah, his name is Grogu. Spoiler alert. Um it's yeah. not really a big spoiler. It's not a it's big spoiler. Fucking, fucking name. Like, yeah. There's no meaning to it. It's just his name. Yeah, but um, people are still but, people but, still call him Baby Yoda anyway. I gotta see that hoodie though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fire. Uh that I that I have to um catch up on and I gotta catch up on the boys too. I got to finish see, that. See now the now the boys is up next. Now, yeah. now that I finished uh, Mandalorian, the boys is uh, is on deck. So yeah, I got to do that as well. But um, other than that, it's been um, like I said, the holiday season. Uh it, it just draws us closer to the end of the year. This fucking year, although although we had so much turmoil and fucking you know depression that went through this past year. It fucking went fast as hell, though, bro. Like, it's yeah, it did. Yeah, it flew. I feel like you and me were watching the, the ball drop. Didn't they come over last year? No, I was with Tori for no, that. No, no. You went, you know, you, you were, I think you were around like the day after or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. But no, but the year before that, I was over your house for the ball drop. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, which you and me were literally just sitting down, just fucking playing games and just hanging out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's, what it, well, yeah, that's what it ended up being. But, um, yeah, it just went this year, fucking went quick. I, I, I it's, Fucking ridiculous! Yeah, blue. I don't. I don't believe Christmas is over already. That's it's it's insane to me. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. But um, other than that, like this has just been one of those those years that we look. Let's just be grateful for what it is right now. I don't know whether I, I should do the. I, I'll save it for. I'll save it for next week's episode. I'll do the um the year fucking review kind of look. Well, we're we'll coming a promo. Are we coming a promo for Yeah, something like that. But I I, I do just do have some quicks to touch. Quick things to touch on. Shout out to everybody who part like I, I mentioned before who partaked in uh, Turbuckle Tabloids fantasy football this year. Thank it's, you. It's fucking. It was fun as hell. Uh, uh, big little brother D is in the championship. He's All in right. there. Uh, I forgot. I think he's. I forgot who he's playing. I think he's playing a guy named Iron Sausage. What a fucking name. Ooh, that's pretty hot. I think. I, I, I'm. I'm still in one league. Uh, Alive in one. Huh? And I'm alive in one league. I don't know which league it is, but um. I, yeah, you're most likely alive in the TRSS league. And guess what? I have Kamara, and guess what? He had 50 points. Yeah, it was 50. I was watching that game yesterday, and yeah. the, the household that I was in, the uh, the guy, one of the guys that was there, was like, "Oh, I'm playing in the championship." I was like, "Yeah, I was like, yeah, how's that going?" He goes, "Yeah, yeah, I have a good chance." And he goes, "Wait a minute." Um, I think the guy that I'm playing against has Kamara. <laughs> yep, you're <laughs> talking. If, if you have wild. Kamara this week, if you have Kamara this week, there's a high chance you're winning. Yeah, and, I'm happy, got, and I do. He so, got his uh, ass washed. I'm like, happy to say. I'm happy to say that I do. Right now, I want you to think about something. I am up. I am up. No, Kamara had 58 points in the league in, in, in this week. Okay. I'm up seventy-two to nothing. Oh, that's what it was. You had him in um. You had him into uh, Turbo Tabloids League. That's what you had him. So I'm still in the playoffs with that? No, that yeah, that's fucking um. Oh, I'm so I'm washed. All right. Well, I no, guess that was last... that was a ninth place game. That was a ninth place. Oh, game. okay. Well, I guess I'll be ninth place, like semi-pro. <laughs> fourth place. Fourth place. 
And uh, yeah, but even so, that was fucking savage. <laughs> it was just savagery. Yeah. yeah, no fucks given, fam. But um, yeah, that 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 that. that uh, shout out to shout out to everybody who who, who partook in that this year. Um, Want to make that an annual thing for the the podcast. The podcast it's like it's already over. God damn. Yeah, I know, right? Shit. What fuck, the fuck? Football's yo, over. Uh, basketball is back though. Yeah, I'm mad hype for that shit. Oh I'm so shit! Basketball is back. I'm so though. hype. I wish I wish I knew people to do a fantasy basketball league. Um, I wouldn't do it because it. it it's every, every day, day it changes. That shit is fucking ridiculous. I can't be. I can't. I can't follow that shit every day. I can't do that. But the um. What what was it? That that was great. I'm, I'm appreciate everybody for that for partaking in that. Also, um, this week I was listening to audiobooks. I was on audiobooks uh, kick. I was on that kind of kick this week. Nice. And this week I was listening to uh, comedian and actor John Leguizamo. He had two books that I listened to. I mean, I, I've seen his shows, but I was listening to his audiobooks this week. It was uh, Ghetto Clown and Latin History for Morons and. The one thing I I, I took from I've 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 been a Leguizamo fan for years, but I, I didn't start off that way. I actually was in high school and I had the chance that I could have met him, right? And went to the show and and I should have, but I didn't because I was a little arrogant prick. I used to be a, for you guys who didn't know in high school I was a theater major, and nice. I had my hands where I could have been in a lot of movies and a lot of uh, commercials and TV shows and such, and I was wanted too, like. Director, like casting directors, they they actually wanted this face on fucking TV. Uh, who, All right. who fuck knew? But I was the murderer. But I was an arrogant prick, so I had the chance that I could have met this guy, and I didn't. I didn't take it because I, I thought that he was he was he was exploiting my culture and my people. What a stupid ass I was back then. And <laughs> what an ass! You could have had a check and everything. But you know, not even check just to meet him and rub shoulders to see how he was getting it in and all, and and how he got into the business and all that. But I was like, oh fuck him, I ain't gonna do that shit. And then when my classmates came back and they was like, yo, San, yo Santiago, you missed out. It was great, blah blah. blah. Man, fuck them. I don't need. I don't need to be. Man. What a dumbass I was. But um, <laughs> I started listening to his his um his audio book and it it was funny because it started. I I once again started. L- Putting together like how we do the show and what we do based on how and I and I think I touched about it about uh, about some of this last week where we we just do this show where although we don't have the audience that we have we should have that we 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 deserve to have we still do it on the mindset of. I'm not doing this to fucking make, you know, uh, an audience fucking uh, um, get drawn to us because we're kowtowing to what society wants us to be like. I was also listening to, and we'll, we'll, we'll go into, um, I'm going to that in a round square circle. I finally listened to, um, because I, I was hearing it from time to time, I'll, I'll slip it to you, Eric Bischoff's podcast. Yeah, it's a good. I like it. It's actually good too. He's very verbose. That fucking talks. I thought I was bad. That motherfucker loves to hear himself speak. I thought David Adams was bad. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, love, I love you, David Adams. But uh, you're a ring announcer. I don't expect anything less. But uh, Eric, Eric Bischoff, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, guy he loves, loves to hear himself speak. Yeah, because he, uh, because he they, they didn't let him speak in WWE, so now he has a chance to again. Yeah, so. it was crazy. But I, I was listening to the Leguizamo book, and I go, you know. As much as we'll sit there and say, you know what, you know, fuck you guys on the page, you're fucking, you're not voting or whatever. I I appreciate and 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 uh, I I thank all you guys who listen to us because, like I said, I watch the the numbers that we get not only in Turbocal Tabloids, um, um, analyticals, but RageWorks is analyticals as well. And you don't understand the hundreds and sometimes thousands a week that you guys listen and download the episodes. I, it, it's amazing because I still sit there go. No, I seriously. Think of you when I love you. I, I sit there honestly. I sit there go. Who the fuck gives a fuck whether or not if I'm playing fucking Mario 35 Battle Royal? Like who cares? You'd be surprised. You'd who be gives surprised. a fuck if I if somebody bro, really people, wants? Bro, people, people, people watch people play video games all day on a fucking. Yeah, but computer. then I go. Who gives a fuck if somebody really cares if I can't stand Kenny Omega or not? Like, or that Oski fucking has this uh, love hate relationship with. WWE like who who really cares and it matters people it matters. do and people do 
And I, I and I appreciate people for that. So listen to Leguizamo when he talks about how he went out and he did he did his shows and regardless he had family who sued him. He had friends who sued him, and he was yeah, like, you know what? I hear haters. Yeah, but it, he said, you know what? It was all worth it. It, it was worth it. So, you know, the it's it's the it's about the grind. It's about the 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 work. And if you don't love what you're doing, then don't do don't it do anymore. It. And I and like uh, I said last week, I look forward to every week putting this mic on and just fucking talking shit. I fucking love it. It's the best, isn't it? Hell yeah. Speaking of talking shit, you know I gotta go into one political rant before we continue. Uh, yeah. If you guys don't believe in the Grinch, that motherfucker is playing golf in Mira Lago, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. That motherfucker. <laughs> that, that, that Facebook, that, that, that post made my day. That son of a bitch. Isn't it something, though? Oh, it's crazy. That it's fucker. Crazy. The dude's a dickhead. That fucker sat there. And when I'm talking about that fucker, I'm talking about that president, that piece of shit in office, who still, he's got a couple of days left in office. I think it's number three. What the, the fuck, what the is, fuck going is that? On? I wish I knew. Uh-huh. Hold on a second. Pause this shit for a second. What the fuck is going on? Hold on. Hold up. Sorry about that. I, what the fuck? I what thought I thought Ben the Brit was in your house. What the fuck was that? He actually was yesterday. Oh. Uh, I, he was he was under my tree. Oh. No, um so yeah, isn't it fucking astounding that this it's piece of shit you know, first of all, they put up the they they they, they came to the agreement for the six hundred the six hundred dollars per person kind of shit, which is he, which yeah, is shit okay. money, which is shit money though. It's Not shit to... money, but you know what? It's something, and I don't think we're in a place right now to be a. Uh... We we need you know people who need to pay rent need need some sort of income right now. And that's granted, so... but you know what though? Honestly, there's other countries who have less than us that are fucking making their people. Uh, um. Still have us They're not making But that Giving the people uh, uh, Some kind of stability To where they should Have some kind of money So monthly They're rolling them out Some kind of relief fund So They're about to roll out So everybody was about to Blow B for $600 Right They was ready yeah. to roll out. He didn't want to sign off on it Because he said Oh No Because uh, Every household should get $2,000 Okay Fine um, Let's go And people are sitting there Giving Pelosi bullshit Pelosi and the Dems are like, let's get it. Fuck it. They want it. Let's give them the money. Because yeah, you know why? Yeah. At the end of the day, it fucking goes back into the country anyway, you stupid fucks. It doesn't matter. It goes back into the country tenfold. Yep. People don't get The country gives money out, which is a socialist thing anyway. Stupid asses. It goes out, but it comes back tenfold because the people who are fucking getting the money and buying shit or using it for whatever gets taxed on it anyway. So people get the, the money comes back anyway. So it's one of those things to where why not ride on it? GOP denied it, whatever the case may be, blah, blah, blah. Then all of a sudden some kind of uh, agreement was coming. This fucker leaves and he goes to fucking play golf. Because, yo, and I feel like that's the that's the problem here. Like, whenever he, he whenever like the pressure's on him to do like I don't know a presidential thing, he he runs away and he plays golf. But this is what this is what he is. He's a petty prick who still can't get over the fact you fucking lost, you douchebag, you fucking lost. And I said there's a special kind of hell waiting for this man. It, he's gonna. He's not even gonna. He's gonna have a fucking uh, 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 a a queen size bed with oversized spikes to sleep on when he's in fucking hell. I'm telling you, it's my horrible. dad. My dad calls him the Antichrist. He he's not. That even, might be a little harsh, but no, um, no, no, no. It's it's actually he's it's kind of soft because he's not even that fucking devious or evil. He's just a petty bitch. He's like a scorned man or woman. Who just can't tolerate that you got fucking dumped, and that's yeah. the that's a petty bitch. It's sad, isn't it? Isn't it sad? Uh, that it's our just, leader is it's, like this, and people. And, and, and my dad, my dad even said at the dinner table on Christmas Eve. He, which I don't know if you agree with him, he said yes. Donald Trump is the problem, but you know what the bigger problem is? The fact that there's 49 percent of the United States population that went to the voting polls this year and said, you know what, I'm okay with how life is right now. No, no, I'm no, okay no. With how no, no, is right no, now. no. But here's the problem. All those people that went in, 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 into the voting booths and voted for his ass in November, 
They're now looking different now because if you watch social media, none of the motherfuckers are talking anymore. They're all oh, no, the, the, the person who bet me two hundred dollars blocked me because yeah. he's a pussy. They're so. all not talking anymore. Everybody's fucking quiet now because they all know yep. what of a fucking prick this 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 son of a bitch is, and you know, you followed him to the depths of hell just so that he can burn your fucking ass and then say, you know what? Fuck it. If I didn't win. I'm taking you all you even you people who follow me. I'm taking you all and all his fucking minions turned on him. Mitch McConnell, Barr, they all fucking turned on him, and they all slowly but surely all these motherfuckers they waiting for January sixth because they think they're gonna put it up there, and he thinks that they're gonna fucking sit there and have this coup that's gonna happen, this coup that's gonna happen, and and he's gonna be the pres. No, they're all gonna fucking turn on you, you orange. Fucking wig wearing prick. Well, don't worry. He'll be making. He'll be. Re, he'll, he'll be. Um, redoing the Apprentice with it's Kid Rock as every single person. Over, that's the only person we want to do with the show. Fucking asshole. You held off on the vaccine. You held off on this fucking money. You held off on money on our military. Our fucking military. You held money it's from. It's funny because everyone thinks that Trump uh, coincides with the military. It's like you kept money from them. You fucking dick. And the and and the people who still follow this son of a bitch. And it's just astounding that you're. Fu- but you know what? They'll all go away. They'll go away. Yep. Yeah. Oh. It'll, 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 it'll evaporate. All the re- all the retrumpicans will all wow, go away. Wow. What a, what a, I like that. I got that from Chris Cuomo. Chris Cuomo calls him that retrumpicans. By the way, Chris, Chris and fuck Chris and fucking. Uh, I don't know. I'm a fan of the Cuomos, but that's just a personal opinion. Yeah. It's they'll all go away. It all those fuckers will go away. And and now, like I've been saying for the long, I'm not gonna sit there and say that the Democrats are are, are any better no, because perfect. no, because those motherfuckers too. You're you're too fucking left. You let too many motherfuckers out of jail that shouldn't be coming out of jail. Fuck them too. You let too many people slide on bullshit. New York City's gone to fucking hell in a handbasket because of this. Oh, we gotta let people free. We can't just automatically assume because yeah, they're criminals. Like no, fuck that. Now lock these motherfuckers up too. Get rid of all this nonsense, all this shit. So them, t- their, their their parties are fucking assholes too. But at the end of the day, you fucking follow this prick to the depths of hell, and I hope you burn with him as well. So to continue on to this episode, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Wow. On episode, uh, what are we at? Two hundred and forty-six. Shit, no, it's been wow. Uh, two hundred seven, two hundred seven, ladies and gentlemen. Rounding up the the year of twenty twenty. This week we have on wrestling rundown. What do you have on your end, sir? Well, I just found out that WWE has a new gaming league. Okay. Oh, um, great. Which okay, I guess that was the um, that's they were that's what AJ Styles and all the gamers were told. That's why they stopped getting on Twitch. Uh, we have a, de- a few pa- uh, a few unfortunate passings in the wrestling world, and um, a conversation that supposedly Kevin Owens and Vince McMahon were supposed to be a faction in the WWE. Bunch of rumors, news, and gossip, ladies and gentlemen. Also, we have on Around the Square Circle what we watched, listened to, and followed on wrestling this week as well as... Very good SmackDown. We have SmackDown. We have a combination of AEW and NXT this week. AEW ran late in certain places this. Uh, it started this week. at ten o'clock this this week, ladies and gentlemen. And I NBA have NBA. remind me because I did something. I wanted to. I, I want to. I want to make a mention of something that JD from NY said. And God, that guy's a fucking idiot. Um. Um. No kid. No kidding. And uh, we also people have people praise Ro- him. Just the best part. People people praise him as like I've... the. The new Dave Meltzer. People call him like the number one source of what? Oh God, we'll get to that. And of course, we we'll talk about Raw and what else happened in wrestling this week. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. We will return, and I will uh, probably crack open another beer. So, you guys in a sec. Well, all right. What's going on, everybody? As you know, this is Matt Olsky from Termical Tabloid, but. When I'm not here talking wrestling, uh, I have another hobby, which is collecting Funko Pops. So uh, if any of you guys want to check out my new page, The Funko Hub on Instagram, we promote Instagram live sales, raffles, and just talk about anything Funko related, uh, what you're collecting, what I'm collecting, and supporting the community at its finest. So guys, check out The Funko Hub on Instagram uh, for all your Funko needs and uh, to support the Funko community together. Hey guys, if you are an up and coming artist and you want to share your talents with the world, you know here at Termical Tabloid, we love playing people's music. We do it for 
anyone who has talent and is inspired to just share their love for music and their passion here at Temporal Tavoli. Although we're a wrestling show, we do enjoy our music. Oski and I are aficionados and connoisseurs of good music. So, if you want to play your music on Temporal Tabloid, Make sure you check us out at Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid and you just check out our tiers and just give us some love and we'll show you love by playing your music to the masses who listen to us here at our little goofy podcast. So if you're a big musician and you just want to share it to the masses, check out our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid and um one hand washes the other and we'll make sure that people hear your talents what's going on guys rich here for rage works thank you guys for checking out turnbuckle tabloid the hardest wrestling podcast on the rage works network to find out more visit us at rageworks.net and follow turnbuckle tabloid on social media Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of Turnbuckle Tabloid. This is Wrestling Rundown. Old theme song for the segment. As much as I love you, you have you have you have, you have run your course. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Time for us to switch it up. As a matter of fact, I might I might think about maybe having two. We change it up every oh. week. Yeah, might change it up every I, week. I like that. The yeah. the Turnbuckle Tabloid Show. It is the Turnbuckle Tabloid Wrestling Rundown. Like some shit like that. No, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> it's that wrestling rundown. You've been Where do you get all the news for... and you fuck all the who? I was like, no, I'm good. <laughs> it's like, no, no, we, no, we. It's a little bit too exciting there, ladies and gentlemen. Too much, too much. Too much, too much. Uh, too much speaking of which, yeah, as a matter of fact, we could do, Um, we were talking about before, you know, yeah, come over tomorrow. We could actually do the um, uh, cutting a promo tomorrow. Cause like I said, uh, I do want to do a gift gift exchange tomorrow. So yeah, I got you. I got you something that uh, I know you're gonna like. So. Oh, something that something that'll tickle my fancy. Yes, sir. I want to do yes, the sir. thing. You know, you ever seen what what Homer does when he sees donuts and he wiggles his fingers and goes, "Ooh, that's what I do." Yeah, ooh, and he exactly. does that. <laughs> I love the Simpsons, man. Disney, the... Plus, Disney Plus made me binge the Simpsons. I like it. <laughs> you gotta wiggle your fingers. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um, yeah, Disney Plus, uh, Disney Plus came out with um, Wonder Woman this week as well. No, that's not true. Not made Disney Plus. Sorry, um, HBO, HBO Max. Max. No, Disney Plus was um, Soul. Soul, Soul which out. I actually want to watch. Soul and so. the and the Taylor Swift documentary. Oh, <laughs> great! I already know uh, a bunch of the mooks who were watching that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard Soul was good. My theater teacher from high school said that Wonder Woman sucked. Uh, I, it, it, it's been 50 50. To, Rotten Tomatoes, have, it's, it's up to 78%. But I've had people on the page who said that they loved it, and a couple of my people hit me up and was like they were disappointed. I, I mean, love the first one, so. Yeah. Uh, I, the first one was great. I think Wonder Woman, the first one, is like up there in top three best DC movies of all time. Yeah, even top. Fucking like top five, top ten fucking comic book movies of all time. Yeah, I agree. It was very good. It was a great origin story. I think it uh, works. It worked. It worked. So we'll see. I'll, I'll probably watch that tomorrow or Monday or something. Uh, but I, I, I want to watch Soul as well because I, I love Disney and I heard Soul is uh, really good too. Yes, sir. So as always, I am the Howard Stern of this segment to my Robin Ophelia Quivers Oski. So Oski, take it away. The first piece of news we have this week... The first piece of shit news. ...is that Ryback is going on his show saying that Vince McMahon's health is in terrible shape. 
and that everybody should turn their back on WWE before he kicks the before he kicks the bucket. What? I I put this in my news because wait a minute, wait a minute. I, wait a minute. All right, yeah, 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 continue. Because I'm trying to. I wanna, I, I wanna, I, I had to put this in the news. My own. Because... You, you ever, you ever slurped on something really fast that's cold, and you get a brain freeze, and it just fucked you up for a second. Yep. That's, that's what. That's right what that just fuck happened there. Yeah, according to Ryback, he said that um, due to sources and himself, uh, Vince is not in good shape, and that everyone should turn on him before he kicks the bucket. Uh, and I'm the first one to say. Ryback has no idea about Vince's health, and this is just a way for him to get clout. Even if he did know some kind of insider shit, why the fuck would you turn on the company because of that? That doesn't make any sense. He said, "Get out while you can." He goes, and he basically, basically, he was just talking shit about WWE again. And it, for me, it's just, it's gotten to the point where Ryback knows he's never gonna get signed again, so he's just saying stupid bullshit like a drunk uncle. But he's not getting signed with anybody. No one's signing him. You, you, see, but he thinks, but see, but he thinks if he does this, these controversial um, news stories, that a company would maybe entertain dude the clout. Has uh, not, WWE. dude has not been signed by any company. He would have been. Easy. In his defense, in his defense, though he hasn't been necessarily wrestling. He he hasn't like I don't think he's announced that he's back for bookings yet. I think he's just been doing his YouTube channel and shit like but that. But he was doing indie shows. Oh, okay, then he's then he's he fucking been, indie, he's irrelevant. He would okay. have been an easy pickup for Impact. He he would have been their Brian Cage. Right. You know and what I'm Brian, saying? But now he's eating Big Macs and burgers on YouTube for clout. So. And, that's where we're at. And you know what? And if that's how you're going to get your money, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that. Fuck what you heard. Get your money doing that. Hey, fuck that. If somebody's going to if somebody's gonna fucking give us money to fucking talk shit, hey, hey, whatever works. But I, have you have you ever heard his, his podcast? No. It's, uh, I've, I've watched his YouTube videos where he eats like 45 cheeseburgers in one sitting. No, city. his podcast like, uh, is very missed and hit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm not surprised by that, to be it, honest. It's it's very Russo like, and um, I I well, love... let me tell you something. Triple H was my best friend, look, and now we just fuck on weekends. Look, bro. I mean, I used to love working for WWF at the time, bro. But but Ryback is very um, uh, bitter and petty. But it's also the other thing. Like, dude, you could have way moved on to other fucking pastures if you wanted to. Like I said, you would have been impact. He fucked that up. You could have been instead of Brian Cage, it could have been you. But I think yep. that let me let me give you a fucking insight. They just reeled it reeled it into you, and um, didn't really get to give you uh, the, the the memo, which was they didn't tell you directly, but they reeled you in, and just wanted to give you the bullshit to say, hey, you know what, we don't have anything for you now. But the real honesty was. You really can't fucking wrestle. It's like, oh you, wow, you fucking suck. And I, yeah, and you, were I giving, you were you were giving you were giving a mid nineties gimmick. And I was and I was and I was a Rybacker. Like I fucked with him. He was the modern day, if you want to say that, Goldberg at that time. Yes, he, it was. Yeah, you know, and you had to look, um, but you had a chip on your shoulder, and you couldn't fucking. Heyman couldn't put you over. If Heyman couldn't put you over, couldn't put you over, you were shit. Well, they almost kissed on live television, so. Yeah, but, I mean, come on. But um, as for this, now, now, is Vince not in best of health? Who's to say he's not? Because you know he's seventy five, seventy six years old. This fucking guy's old. He's not. Um, he's not. He doesn't look well, to be honest. He, I tell you, he looks like. Uh, I tell you, he looks like one of the animatronics in fucking Disney World. He's like the fucking um. Was it the Hall of Presidents? Is what it's called. He could, he could, he could be <laughs> fucking Lincoln right now. I mean, with the his Hall look. of Presidents. Yeah, he, done. he got that. He could be either uh, Andrew Jackson, Lincoln, one of those fuckers. But right. But to say to turn away from W, that's stupid. That's dumb. Now I will present this. People are talking about that the way that NXT is going. Uh, they're not too. People aren't too happy how NXT is. Everyone's because, hurt, right? Everyone's hurt, and the reason why is because the booking is the way they're done. Because you're you're, you're trying to chase this fucking AEW uh, uh, train, which you shouldn't. You shouldn't even be on a fucking same track with them. You should be doing something different. 
Do you think that's because Vince still has his fucking hand in NXT and Triple H has to make these decisions now? Uh, I, I with the product, I, I think that Vince is looking over. I think Vince is looking over um, NXT for sure. But like, I don't think it's that. That's the reason. I, I the product's good. It's still very Triple H esque. Like, I don't see it really fading away to like a PG bullshit. Like, I just think that people are hurt. I think that. It gets boring after a while because it's every week, uh, and I th- and, and you know shit just goes up and down. Uh, wrestling shows are a roller coaster ride. Some, but that's some what, ones but that's what some wrestling some... is. Wrestling is an up and down, but you should have more I, I, ups I, I, than down. You should, and I think NXT does have more ups than downs. I oh. do. I, I mean, their tech team division is terrible. They need a. They need. A, they, if I if I was NXT right now, my priority would be the tag division. And I would work on – I would bring the Rascals automatically up. I'd be like, you know what? Y'all don't need training. We need you now. I would, get Ethan, I would get Ethan Page and Josh Alexander and say, okay, I'll pay you. I don't care what you need. We need you now, okay? Because I, the tech division is terrible. And the women's – the women are great. The the men's division is great. Um, it's just – every show needs tuning. And I think, I think they're all right. I think to, they'll be all right. To me, I just said that I, I go – um, someone has to tell either it's Triple H himself or um a henchman that works for the main roster that tells oh, Mike, Vince, oh no the henchman I'm no, so on, on, on the main roster that tells fucking um Vince, listen, um you might want to get this talent up. Oh really, is that good? All right, let's let's call him up. And it's like oh fuck. Triple H is like, Really? This is what the fuck you're doing to me? No. Well that's 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 another problem though with NXT. Like Vince calls these dudes up before they even have a chance to even have a, a good story right. on the show on NXT. So. I don't know how the fuck he was able to wrangle the fact that Undisputed Era has not been called up yet. I, that's well, like, I think I think I think that was, that's a demand by Adam Cole and the group, the same way as Jar Gargano and, and Champa. Uh, Champa. Yeah. So I think Gargano, I think Gargano literally threatened that if I get go to the main roster, I'm not I'm I'm leaving. Yeah, probably. Yeah, exactly. So like, and that's not even a joke. That's dead ass. So but, I, I, don't, I don't I don't think it. I don't, I don't think I don't I don't think I think it's like that. But fucking for for Ryback to sit there and say to leave, I was like, why would you leave? That's dumb. That's real stupid. I did, that's Ryback, a, Ryback's just mad, bro. You know, join me, join me in your relevancy, everybody. He's he's kind of looking like Zoidberg right now from fucking um Futurama. Wow, wow. that's that's something else. I have a report here that uh, I thought was interesting to put in the notes, but if it's not, um, supposedly back um, uh, in the 90s, Jim Ross said that Vince McMahon paid Shawn Michaels $750,000 per year to sit at home. Uh, sit at home from um, pay-per-views and from the from the, from the shows. Um, why I say this, do you think that he would do that now? And is there anybody on the roster you think that Vince has a true connection with um, or do you even think he tries to gain connections with these wrestlers like he did back in the day with Sean and Brett and like the, his best friends? I or think, you think that... he's you think it's past that. You think it's you think it's more of a uh, I'm here for business or like back in the '90s where it's like, hey, all my best friends are here. I'm good friends with Taker. I'm with Sean. We all travel the road together. Well, I think I think um, there's there's probably some missing information with that or some inconsistency with that because the. Um, the seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year to stay home is probably due to the fact when Sean was a prissy little bitch and lost, know, his smile. lost his smile during that era kind of shit, and that's when you know contractually he would have had to do that. But the other thing to where the game is different, the business is different now because there's a time to where leaving a talent off screen. Doesn't hurt the business if when they come back and come in, you know, they come in tenfold. Look at fucking Sting. Sting in WCW, he was off TV for over a year. All he did was fucking hang out in the lights and just stand around watching right. the product. And he was That's getting all you paid. Gotta do. Yeah, and he was paying. He was getting paid millions for that. He didn't do shit. All he did was just stand around and just look and have a fucking uh, crow or what was it, a vulture on his arm or some shit. That's all he did. So, I mean, sometimes it works for the storyline. And if you could get a gig that pays you that way, if Vince can pay Sean to do that, and Sean's like, fuck yeah, I'm going to do it. If Sting is like, fuck yeah, I'm going to do that. I mean, and it betters the storyline because when it ends up coming, when Sean ends up coming back, 
it became his storyline with fucking Stone Cold. It became you know one of the biggest fucking runs for Stone Cold at the time. So it works. If you got to pay a little bit more for it, I, I get it. It's understand. It, you can't do it these days because Vince is not going to allow that anymore because Vince is going to like fuck that. If I'm paying you this money, your ass is going to be on TV every fucking week. They don't. Right. They don't appreciate the storyline anymore. What they appreciate the fact is like, if I'm paying you this money, you better fucking get out there and get it and fucking and. I don't care if you break your ass doing it, but you're gonna earn this bread tonight. So uh, earn that money. Yeah, it's different. It's it's it's, it's a different era. Ah! I just wanted to use that one again. Wow. Um, it is official that uh, Pat McAfee has been pulled off of WWE TV, and the world is asking why. Once again, we just talk about storylines. It works for storylines. It, it's better. It's because they lost that NXT takeover. Yeah, right, and. He walked. He he sold it wearing a neck brace. He did what he had to do, and you know what happens? It helps the storyline. I mean, that's all I can tell you. It's it. it, it, it what, what is it that we always say on the show? We say, uh, "I can't miss you if you don't leave." And when he comes back, he will be a probably. He'll probably even be a more demonical fucking uh a diabolical fucking um heel. So. Yeah, it's cool. You could you could take him off TV. Oh well, I mean, I just think that like he's the best promo in the business right now, uh, and you want ratings. Okay. So it's like, but like you know, he's you know, I, he's not there yet because he's so new with the with the business and all that. But like, yeah, but, then I, you, but I, then I, you, I did look forward to his promo. But then you week. say that, and then he, he, by fucking January fifth, you're like, It'll oh, be boring. Well, can we get him off TV already? It, it, you know. You, you already know fans are fickle, bro. Like this is what it is. I just like I, I I'm a believer in like let me miss you, but at the same time it's like you're so new and you're so like you you just got here. Like I kind of want more time to miss you, like be to be able to get to that point. Nah, but you also you gotta get taken consideration as well. He works for Barstool Sports, right? Yes, right? he does. Okay, what's what's about to happen soon in um in sports? Um, they're all gonna come back. Uh, that's one. You know what's the other thing? Right what? now, NFL playoffs. Well, that's he's, important. And he's a he's a he's a former football player, so he's got to be right. in touch with that. And especially right. with I'm recording AJ. And God damn! <laughs> but put Holy AJ on. Shit. Let him let him come hang out. Uh, I mean, if I had another mic, I mean, <laughs> I would add him to the group. Oh, but, listen, uh, you should work on that. That'll be cool. We got to work on that. Yeah, uh, get, get a duo mic. Yeah, uh, but also think about it like this. Uh, Super Bowl is coming up Playoffs are coming up Barstool, he, needs to work, he needs to focus on his show Super, Star, um, um, Super Bowl is coming up And though that Barstool Sports has to be involved in all that So he's not going to be able to be All you know Engulfed in wrestling 100%. So, Yeah yeah so Believe me after Super Bowl The week after Super Bowl I guarantee he'll be there That makes sense I would not be surprised. You know what? You know what? Thank you. you know what? That's one hundred percent right. Oh, sorry. I had talked over you. I stepped on your shit. <laughs> you are one hundred percent right, bro. Yeah. Uh, next piece of news. Oh, sorry. Fuck it. Couldn't hear that. We'll get it uh, in up post. Next, up we'll ne- get up it next, in we post. have Ronda Rousey shares the one thing she doesn't miss about working WWE, and it's the traveling. Former Raw Women's Champion said that um, it's not the bumps that she that he tried to take, but rather the brutal travel schedule. She goes, I love wrestling, but I think it was maybe Sarah Logan who told me this. She wrestles for free, but they pay her to travel. The hardest part, I think, was just not being able to lay down horizontally, you know? Taking a bunch of hard bumps, you want to lay down on a nice bed instead of a plain seat. It really got to me, and I miss my bed every night. So, I, <laughs> I, I, with, uh, It's funny, I, took, I, I shared that article on the, on the group page because of that right. quote, right? But the reason why I did because I wanted people's thoughts and opinions on it. Because once again, thank you guys who follow the page who don't fucking comment on shit. But uh, <laughs> but here's the other thing: I just wanted to do the Audi Lang words. I can't yeah, sleep exactly. in my bed. Wah! I'm getting Wah! paid to wrestle and do it in other states and cities. Wah! Look at me crying because I can't sleep in my bed. Wah! <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> I, I look. Uh, I get it. I get it. I like the quote though. I wrestle for free, but I get paid to fly. I like that thought process, which is it pretty. It's pretty much true. That's what it is. Um, yeah. but I mean, come on, Ronda. I mean, come on, Ronda. Listen, I, I 
you had a big fucking spot in WrestleMania when you first debuted. You it was it was phenomenal. You did great, you know. And to me, your talent just declined because they let you do whatever the fuck you wanted to do, and you were lucky that you had women to work with who sold the fuck for you. And who accepted you. And who accepted you. Because to be honest, if it was back in the days and your you mentor... You would have shit your bag that night. And your, your, not your mentor, your idol. If it, Your idol, Piper, would have told you to go fuck yourself. Because he'd be like, you're not in wrestling. You're an MMA fighter. You shouldn't be in this business until you 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 learn how to appreciate it. Right. I he'd agree. He'd told you to go but, fuck but, yourself. But... Or does her statement, you think that statement resonates with the whole locker room in terms of... No. Listen, uh, uh, the bumps don't matter. She's basically saying the bumps don't matter. I'm a strong bitch. I care about not laying down on a bed. Wah. Wah. I don't have my pillow. Wah. She fucking, listen, she's another one. She sold a fucking company a bill of goods and said that she was going to do all this shit. And, you know, she walked away and she said, you know what? I want time for me. I want to make a family. Still waiting for them. I remember. I remember I'm still when waiting for them eggs to be fertilized, bitch. Still waiting. I remember, I remember when she went to the Royal Rumble and like after the after the Royal Rumble, she went to an interview on ESPN and she said, "I will be here for years to come. This bitch is already gone." Hey, please. Like I say, take the money and run. And that's and and that's exactly what WWE should be about. Unless you start respecting the wrestlers and respecting what wrestling and business. is and the business, that's what wrestlers should do. Take the money and fucking run. I agree. Shazam. <laughs> AEW Dynamite was after the NBA um, opener this week, and uh, NBA fans finally got their first taste of AEW. And let me tell you, they weren't happy. Oh, yeah, yeah, tell them. Let me go get another beer for this, because I, I, this is where my rant is going to be at. Go ahead. They called Chris Jericho uh, Fat Thor. Uh, they made fun of Darby Allin. They called Ricky Starks a rock wannabe. The, the 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 Twitter the Twitter fandom uh, this week was on fire as AEW was flamed by NBA fans new and old. Chris Jericho being called old and fat on the uh, was the was the highlight tweet this week, saying, "Why is he still wrestling? This dude is done." We had those. We had um. We had people saying, "Sting still alive." People asked, is Sting still alive? Red, the Twitter world was pissed off at AEW this week. They called it a wrestling ripoff. Uh, a bunch of NBA fans um, were not happy with the product this week and said, I am never – they were like, wow, this is what I – this is what I, this is what it is? <coughs> now, what do you the... think about the rants that, that, that happened on the Twitter? Because I loved it. I loved it uh, as a funny perspective. But um, AEW did not get a good review from the NBA fans this week. Here's the pros and cons of that. I'll go with the cons. The cons is the fact that the cons, as in Tony Khan, I know what I'm saying. The cons is that is the 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 plan for AEW and TNT was to get that NBA fan base to join along with them, and it worked. It after, worked right, and it was to build the fan base. The con that happened there was the fact that you got this blowback from it. Now, uh, you got to understand that a lot of the, the depending on the demo that we're looking at, especially in that eight, in that um in that in that time frame, especially on that day, a lot of them are not younger NBA fans. They're they're a little bit older, um, especially in the opening night of NBA week for 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 TNT. They're guys who just click it on. And I know people at work who who did the same, that they were watching. And this happened last year where they watched it and they didn't change the channel. They were getting ready for work or whatever the case may be. And they saw that wrestling and all. And they're like, what the fuck is this? And they all go, oh, shit. I, I know this. I know this. And that's what the audience, they feel that they can gravitate and pull in. But I got the same blowback from a lot of people who go, what the fuck happened to this person? What, why the fuck are they doing this? What the hell is why this? Is Jer- why does Chris Jericho look like Mr. Krebs without the show? And this was, and mind you, this was a year ago. This was, this was just a year ago when they, they when this was happening as well. So, uh, the pro is is that you're getting the attention that you would want to get. You have but, eyes on you, but are they good eyes? Yeah. Or are they bad eyes? But it, the hey, question. listen, 
uh, any promotion, bad or good, is good promotion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I always I, say I, that. I get that. But they, they basically buried Jericho, like, really bad, which... But of course never, they I, are. I, which, which I never asked you this. Um, do you agree with them? Like, do you think Jericho should just ring it up? I... Th- I th- he, you got to think about it like this. You got to look it in the eyes where even 10 years ago, when you go he click on and you go, oh, shit, what the fuck? All right, let me... Let me t- look at... Uh, I'm trying to think of... um I'm trying to think of a wrestler that we... Or even an NBA player or a sports athlete that we know of that all of a sudden they retire and they come back and you go, ooh, what the fuck? I ain't seen them in TV. What the fuck happened to them? You would have that same blowback. You'd be like, what the fuck happened to this? Yeah, but you Shit. know what? Some of them come back and it's like, oh, wow, you look great. Jericho comes Some of like, them. Um... No, there's a picture of Jericho going around that he put up a selfie and, and they were talking about he looks like auntie ready to go to the club. <laughs> to go catch him like an auntie cougar that's trying to go out to get himself uh get himself a young man or some shit like that. I was right. Like, yeah, it nah. Was, it was a it, weird it, it, picture. That, that, that picture made the rounds. That picture made the rounds, bro. But um Yeah, the same thing goes with uh, the idea with Sting of uh, like, really? What the fuck are we doing here? <laughs> and what and, and rest and um around the square circle, I want to talk about that shit as well, because Sting says some stuff that I, I, I went. Okay, AEW, you don't even know who the fuck you are anymore. So right, right, uh, we'll right, get to that. Right. I but, hated it. I say I, I didn't like Sting's promo this week at all. But um, it and this leads to to uh, the JD from NY made a comment, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say verbatim, but it was more along the lines to um trying to bash NXT because he looked at the ratings and he's like, NXT is done. There's no need to be doing this anymore. It's over oh, AEW one. So I go, wait a minute. If you look at the fucking ratings, and which we don't give a fuck on ratings about here, like I still don't get it. Where it goes, the only people who should give a fuck about ratings is the networks. As yep. if for fans, you have no idea what the fuck I it hope means. People, I hope people understand that. You make a good point. This is not a war between NXT and AEW. This is a war between USA Network and A and T and T. Right. This is. Ratings has it doesn't have anything to do with fandom. It has no this is something that the networks worry about because they worry about their demos, they worry about their advertisers and all that. The the at the end of the day, fans consume wrestling differently these days. Let me give you the heads up again, because Oski and I have said it. We can watch wrestling any fucking time. We don't need yep. to watch it at that point. I work late hours. I have to watch wrestling at another time because I have to sleep before I get to work. So I watch wrestling later. I don't watch it at that time. It's pretty. It's pretty hard to, to watch it at, at that time at this at the live time. Right. The it's difficult nowadays. unless I'm off or you know I'm not sleepy or fucking. It's tough to watch wrestling at that time for me. So I watch it later. That doesn't matter. What What's the thought process is just. For networks that they're looking at, what is a more effective for advertising, and what key demos they're getting for their network. So, for JD to NY says like AEW is um, um, AEW is winning and, and NXT is over. You're stupid because they just went and got an overflow of NBA fans at a ten o'clock hour. Which, by the way, NXT was on at that time and they got a six hundred and Something rating share. They, they were they were almost at seven hundred seven hundred thousand themselves, right? At eight o'clock, AEW had a seven hundred something, right? I, mean, I think it was like seven seventy five thousand, something like that, right? The majority of those people were watching the fucking NBA. I would believe that more than half weren't waiting for AEW. A million and something were watching fucking NBA. And then clicked off to something up, but others left it on be- just cause, or they fell asleep watching fucking NBA. You know what I'm saying? So the majority of them didn't really give a fuck about AEW if it was on or not. They just it was just there. The number should have been more. Ass- you should have been at 1.6, 1.7 million if AEW fans were were, were ready to watch at 10 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's a stupid argument. It was dumb for this is what I'm saying. 
He comes off this, and I got, what was it they call him? The what? The new what? Meltzer of a fucking. The new. They're calling him the newest, the best new source on YouTube for wrestling. What? He's the fucking the the biggest dick sucker of fucking uh uh of uh, what the fandom <laughs> likes. I guess so. That doesn't make any. It... He is the voice of the voiceless. That's what he calls himself. <sighs> God. Yeah. How many? How many other fucking um? I, th I think I probably even said that once or twice on this fucking show. I have used that same moniker or whatever. Come on, man. I don't. I you know what it is, and, and it's not him, because a lot of a lot of uh, podcasts, especially wrestling, come off that way where they think that they know what the fuck they're talking about, and they really don't because it's what we always say is clout chasing. But the other idea is the fact that um, you have to be anti-establishment uh, establishment just cause. But yet you're still blowing HOG's beef, and they haven't been relevant in a in a year, right? And you're still blowing H. How the fuck you blowing HOG's beef, and they haven't and they haven't had a show in a year, and their and their talent has fucking left the fucking uh, the, the, the 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 barn, and they're out doing other shit, and you still blow. God, whatever. I would love to get I would love to get him back on the show again. I swear I would love to get him on. Uh, you can but, make that happen. Yeah, but other than that, uh, I, I have to say that when it when it when it when it came to the the, the NBA fans, I I think they actually just spoke what the fuck was the the real honesty of what AEW thought was gonna be the 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 I guess a a a feeling of fandom coming back to wrestling when they spoke truth and it was like. The fuck is this? <laughs> right. <laughs> you kidding? Yo, know, I read those fucking tweets. I was dying at work. I was like, yeah, I was like, I told, and I remember we spoke about it. I said, I told you, people are gonna look at this fucking company and go, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Honestly, and you and you nailed it around the head, bro. You're a real idiot. You know that. Uh. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, there is a rumor that WWE were bringing back the pay-per-view Armageddon for the Feb for the 28th of February, and people are saying it's about damn time we bring back these kind of pay-per-views due to the low ratings. Red, do you think it's best for business to bring back these um, edgy kind of pay-per-view names? Like, I guess Judgment Day is kind of a kind of not kind of edgy compared to the bullshit we get nowadays. Is is, do you think the issue is are the the pay per view names? Uh, do you think it, it has anything to do with it? Do you know why they stopped doing it? No. Reason I just, why I just, I, thought, I just thought it was too edgy, and they were like, "All right, well, let's make it stipulations." No, no, no. The reason why they stopped doing it, like, uh, what was it? Judgment Day, Armageddon. Um, what was another Backla one? Well, Backlash is back. No, but, Backlash um, is no. Um, they they had, no, mercy. no no more no 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 mercy. Um. It was more of those, like, um, Worlds Collide or some shit, like, those kind of shits. Not Worlds Collide. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, World War Three or some shit like that, like those kind of things. The right. reason why they stopped them was because of 9-11. Really? Yeah. The reason why they stopped them was because of 9-11, because uh, Armageddon, which is a thought about 9-11, uh, Judgment Day, uh, Oogie Boogie Religion, or... Uh, uh, Judgment Day is 9 coming. 9-11 coming, yeah. And that's why they stopped them. They And that's why they had to get... Uh, great um, pay-per-view names like Great Balls of Fire. Fatal Four Way. <laughs> so they <laughs> once again the cricket sounds come back. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 I listen. We live in a fucking society that's so it, it, it's soft. We're soft, and I hate using that snowflake kind of shit because that's such a right wing kind of name to say. Motherfuckers is soft. If you would right. just sit there and just get back, wrestling is not to be. I I, I don't know. I, I, you can't sit there and have people, men, women battling each other, and name something that goes to that like and call it capital uh capital fun. No, that's capital punishment. Yeah. Fuck it. We're beating each other's ass. Somebody may get hurt badly. Yes. Name is something crazy. Fuck that. <laughs> Armageddon. Fuck it. Bring it back, motherfuckers. Well, supposedly they will be. So, yeah, uh, good. Ha happy to see it. Do you have to ask permission from your father-in-law first? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. 
Anything else before I close it out with the last news of the other week? Uh, la, 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 I know we had an unfortunate passing in the wrestling world that you shared, but I don't know anything about the person, so I, oh, okay. I, I, I was, was going to give you the, the ball on that one. Uh, just a quick rundown. We have NXT possibly opening up another show. NXT Lucha may be on the horizon. They already talked about NXT India happening, which, by the way, might not be in India because... They can't run shows over there right now because of COVID, so they might do it at the Performance Center or do which it, is at, okay. which is fine, or do it at the NXT Thunderdome. Is that what they're calling it? I don't know what the fuck they're calling it. Uh, they're calling it something. The Capital bullshit. Oh yeah, that Capital Wrestling Center. So, uh, so NXT Lucha might happen. People are speculating that it's gonna be wow. They're gonna bring back Lucha Underground. It's like no, they're not. They're uh, really not. <laughs> By the way, I do miss the Lucha on the ground, though. That shit was a fun I, show. I do. Yeah, it was a fun uh, show. Oh, when Johnny, when Johnny Morrison was was relevant? Yeah, yeah. Copy. Uh, excuse me. Uh, so there's a possibility of that happening. We had... um saw, uh, saw an article which... There was a time that CM Punk was ready to buy an indie promotion. Talks were in development. Not in development, sorry. Can't say they were in development, but there was a small conversation... That uh, CM Punk was in 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 a quick text <laughs> to the owner of Ring of Honor. He wanted to buy him at two thousand in two thousand ten. Guess he was making that good WWE money. He was like, "Fuck it, I." Uh, two thousand and ten. Yeah. Wow. All right. He My guy like, wanted to pay back. He's ready to um. He's ready to get that uh, get that Ring of Honor uh, promotion off somebody's hands. But they were like, "Yeah, you don't do business over text by just writing to me and saying." Uh, how much you want for Ring of Honor? <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah we don't. Yeah, we how don't much do, you want for Ring of Honor? Man. We don't do that. Oh, we spoke right. video games earlier. Uh, oh, or what you're leading to? But I'll just do a quick one. WWE released a new game on mobile called WWE Undefeated. Is it good? I don't know. I haven't played it yet. I haven't downloaded it or subscribed or whatever the fuck to it. But it seems to be a out of the ring that's described out of the ring fighting game where oh, I, have, I have it right here yep it looks like a it says play the newest wwe game featuring quick session real-time pvp matches mm-hmm. um action with the strategic depth of depth of an rpg um i might have to give this a chance i heard rpg and i said i might try it out I just want to see what it what it what it. I'm gonna download it right now and I'll give you guys a review next week. Okay, that's a good one. Thank 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 you for that, uh, Oski. And uh, finally, the two deaths that we had this past week because there was one. There's another one that occurred. Uh, the first one that occurred was Kevin Green, a defensive player for the L.A. Rams, a prolific Hall of Famer, passed away this week, and was a humongous wrestling fan so much that he was involved in. WCW at the time he tagged with uh, Mongo McMichaels Steve Michaels and uh, Steve McMichaels in, in WCW for a uh, um, couple of matches in WCW he's actually he was actually pretty good he, he was actually better than Mongo <laughs> that was a weird thing right uh, at the time um, he was even acknowledged by Ric Flair to say if he if wrestling didn't call, I mean, if um, NFL didn't call, that wrestling would have been a big fit for uh, Kevin Green. Kevin Green, uh, as an NFL player, was much loved in the locker room. I remember him to be, he was one of those um, exciting defensive players. And uh, he he exuded that that wrestling kind of gimmick sell. Uh, you know, he showed it off and was very uh, charismatic on a microphone during interviews and such like that. He was, a, he was he, from what I remember, he was a, it was a fun dude, cool dude. Had that like that California vibe, kind of uh, um, laid back dude, but yet yeah, was very, um, very good to 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 have on a microphone in and outside of the the uh, inside outside of the ring and off the field as well. But as a wrestler, it was very very tight. And we also had the passing of Dan Danny Hodge and Danny Hodge. If for a lot of you guys who or wrestling historians is one of these old school shoot grappler wrestlers for, I mean, for years, like no nonsense. I mean, back in the days, beginning of when wrestling started changing, changing over to that um, uh, uh, kayfabe style, but 
was also the kind of wrestler that if you went in the ring with him, you wasn't sure if you were going to win because although the back or the booker is going to say, yeah, you're going over tonight, you wasn't sure if that was going to happen because he he was the truth. Even in in, 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 uh, in an elderly age, a lot of uh, uh, people who knew him, even like guys like Cornette, uh, um, uh, uh, Kevin Sullivan, these guys would say, if you were around Danny Hodge, the man still had a handshake, like a vice grip. And he'll, he was one of those dudes like back in the days that would break open uh, beer bottles with his mouth, like that kind of guy. Oh, hell no. Yeah, he was like short, legit. Um, I believe he was a, a, a collegiate fucking uh, a national champion in uh, in amateur wrestling, but also was great to transition into professional wrestling. And he was a guy, no nonsense, but known as a sweetheart when it came to getting other wrestlers over. Uh, I would do more of a uh, eulogy for him on the an, uh, next episode because the, the news just hit about his passing. 88 years old for Danny Hodge and uh, unfortunately for Kevin Green, it was uh, 58. Young man, it's terrible, terrible that age. That is very young. What the hell? Man? Yeah, terrible ages for, um, for, for, for him. So that's uh, my news on my end. I was gonna play the tap music, but I can't find it. But go ahead. Go ahead. What, what do we have left? And the final piece of news we have is that WWE has just announced a new gaming league called the WWE Superstar Gaming Series. It'll be a, re- a series based on wrestlers taking on celebrities in video games. And the series debut is on December 29th, and it will feature Among Us. The Game Among Us and 2K Battlegrounds. It'll be Ronda Rousey, The Miz, Adam Cole, Liv Morgan, Tyler Breeze, Shayna Baszler, and Jessamine Duke facing celebrities like Wale, Le- Lele Pons, Phase Adapt, one of the best, one of the most popular gamers in in the world, and Greg Miller from from um um. Greg, we all know Greg Miller and Xavier Woods. We do. <laughs> we do. Greg Miller. Greg, I know Greg Miller. Well, he's from IGN and from his new um, kind of funny games. Uh, he's a uh, he's a uh, he's he's known for hosting most of the game uh, gaming awards and uh, and um, okay, the content. way you said it, I was like, he could be a neighbor of mine. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. If I can Maybe he that. is. Maybe he's downstairs. Exactly. What do you think about the hypocrisy of this bullshit? Because uh, listen. Hey, you can't use Twitch, but you can play against a shill a network. I don't even think it's hypocrisy. What I think it is is the fact that um, WWE, although it's it's a stolen idea, uh, but it works for them. I don't know how many people would gravitate to this. I think it's stupid where fans would gravitate to it, but they will anyway. And by the millions, people will watch this shit. They will. Of course they will. They will. Of course they will. Because people don't know how to fucking not be sheep and just say, you know what, protest a fucking um, uh, 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 an idea like this. They were accused. Yeah, yeah, protest an idea like this because what you just did was um, take the fucking money out of these 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 um these wrestlers these wrestlers fucking pockets when you're not really helping them out, especially when uh, uh, um, the 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 fucking road is done. They're pretty much at home. They can't really sell merch that they, they, they really want to sell. And you do this. And contractually, and they're lucky that they got wrestlers who will do it because they like video games. Because if you got anybody who be like, I don't do this shit, they'd be like, I'm not, I don't want to fucking do this shit. Fucking fire no, me. They, okay. they, got, they got gamers. <laughs> yeah, they got gamers they there. WWE Incorporated. Yeah. Um, while they, while they gonna play Among Us and go, what the fuck is this? Can you can you watch this as well and do a review on it? I'll try to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll try. I'll, can, I'll, I promise you, I'll try. Or should we send somebody on assignment to do this? Should we? Should we uh, can we send Rondo? Let's, let's, let's throw Rondo. This. Let's send yeah. Let's send Rondo on assignment to do this. Let's send Rondo on this. I know he'll. I know he'll do it. So we'll I'll message. We'll message him in a group. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that because honestly, it's it's um. It, it is it, it's it's it, the hypocrisy is that you didn't think that there was a niche for a, this a money for gaming and, 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 and there it, is and and, and this is not gonna go away ladies and gentlemen not nope. at all not at people, all I hope people understand something this is like this is not a fact statistic this is honestly my personal opinion 
there's more people watching gaming tournaments than ever before. Listen, it is not going anywhere. On people a drunk, on a drunk Yo, night, on a drunk, rate, on a drunk night, I watch esports. I would on a drunk night. I watched esports fucking competition. You I watch Clash of Clans. Yeah, I watched that. Or, or, or even um, I, I was they're cool, on, aren't they? I was. I was put you onto this. Uh, there's this channel that was playing um. Uh, simulated games. I don't know if it was simulated or people were actually playing it. They were playing um, NFL 2K5, and I was like, "Shit, that shit oh, yeah, no, is bro." Fuck. People, people play Smash Bros. Melee tournaments every day. Those old games are actually one of the hottest um, tournaments to watch. Yeah, like I'll, I'll, I'll get into watching it, but um, for WWE to do this, and like I said, I, I I'm just more of of the of the on on the on the mindset is to where I don't give a fuck how much of a fucking WWE fan I can or cannot be. I'm not gonna fucking do that just because I know what they did to the wrestlers for this. Yep. And I think I I wasn't me watching it. I wasn't watching it. I wasn't watching. I wasn't watching wrestlers doing doing it on Twitch anyway. What makes you think I'm gonna go? I'm gonna give a fuck about watching it on a network? Why would I care? You wouldn't. Yeah, the only the only wrestling outlet that I um that I watch for gaming was I would watch like up up down down fucking videos. Because I thought, they, they, you know they do it right. Yeah, I, I I thought it was fucking hilarious. Shout out to Xavier Woods. That guy's fucking great about it. And I can't wait for him to leave. Oh man, it's coming. Oh oh, when, when, once G four happens, I can't wait for him to leave. Yeah, right, he's I, out. He's gonna he said he even said he's gonna retire soon. Once yeah, he gets that G four gig. And it's fucking great. I'm I'm happy for that. Yeah, but, me um, too. But other than that, yeah, I'm done on my end. And I'm done on my end. So, guys, when we come back, we're going to have a round the square circle, and we're going to breeze through that because young man um, Oski, I don't want to take him away from his young life, but he's got to he's gotta hang out tonight while my old ass sits at home. Unfortunately. My old ass sits at home drinking beers and does, you I'd know. I'd rather be playing cyberpunk. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I hate to say it. Guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Check you guys in a small smidge of a sec. Square Circle, ladies and gentlemen. What we watched to and listen to this past week in wrestling. We usually do this on Get Vocal, but we're giving it to you guys as a Christmas gift on Facebook. Oski. Let everybody know how your Christmas was. You got diarrhea, huh? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> little bit lasagna. of the rhea. Lasagna, lasagna kicked in full gear, but that's all I gotta say. <laughs> Lasagna kicked in full gear. Listen, it happens, bro. Listen, this is what happens at that time. Yeah, man. Holidays. Food, you said you spent food. time with some some Spaniards. No coquito. Nobody gave you the uh, um. No, but it but but it did include a wine tasting, which I don't drink, so I didn't have any. Oh, okay. How, how white is a wine tasting uh, sound? Uh, we had penne. We had rice. We had some soup. Don't know why. Um, <laughs> or like we say in my household. You had a little sopita? You had a sopita? Sopita. sopita. <laughs> yeah, man. It was a good time, though. Great great food, great times uh, for what it was worth. You were finally yeah. able to eat like a human and not fucking... Yeah, and man, not I eat like a bird. Not like a bird. I'll enjoy myself, finally. Hell yeah, I deserved it, man. Around the square circle, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to discuss what's going, what went down and what we saw this past week, and there was some ups and downs during the holidays, but... 
Oski and I have come to the realization that wrestling can be saved and viewed and worked on if you do it properly. So uh, yeah, man, There's a, it could work. It, it could work. So uh, what did you watch this or listen to this week? Um, nothing. Besides the wrestling that we were given, I love your research, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank, thank you for being part of this. <laughs> I love you. I'm research. sorry. First three days was work, and then the holidays. So literally. Um, Merry to Christmas ball. to Marco the Mook. Marco, what's good, fam? Merry Christmas and uh, happy holidays. Feliz Navidad, baby. There you go. Felicidades, señor. Felicidades. Felicidades, señor. Um, on my end, let me just um, I gotta go to my notes. Quickly, because I do take notes, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, ladies, we're doing something. We're, 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 we're getting up in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this week, uh, I, I listened to Cornette. They were doing more cameos. And God, Which how... The thing is they're golden. They're bread and butter right now. God, how awful they are. Jesus. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, Gilbert did a cameo. Why? Apparently... He needs the money. <laughs> uh, well, Gilbert actually just almost died of a heart attack. Exactly, so. he just had a heart. He just recently had a heart attack. Uh, shout out to him for coming back, Frankie. Hey, back. Merry I'm Christmas, sure. Frankie. Uh, and much love to you and the family. Back. Frankie, Frankie, Frankie. I met Frankie through um, one of my one of my good buddies from back in the days. My 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 homie. She um, linked up with this log. Who's they? They both were wrestling fans. All right. Yeah. What's so, good? So uh, it, it's a it's a beautiful beautiful look that these these two are. With. I frankly I don't know how long you guys been with each other, but God, I'm just envious that you can meet a woman who loves you guys, <laughs> love who loves <laughs> wrestling as you guys do. What a great connection! I actually, went, one year we went to their house and I and I was sitting there watching um the Royal Rumble uh, anthology with them. <laughs> <laughs> And I was drunk as shit too Because they had some great wine that night too <laughs> Oh nice wine Wine and dine Yeah you right. fucking lucked up dead motherfucker Yes you did <laughs> uh, So um, At the same time uh, Listening to to The cameos I was really sitting there going shit we need to find a way to 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 link up on that way. He's a shit. Fourteen years that they've been doing together. God damn, fucking awesome. Yep. Shit, I, I I'm shit, I, I'm trying to think. Of what was the last relationship that lasted more than fourteen hours? It's like <laughs> you and my food. Me and the lasagna that I know actually know didn't didn't even last that long. Beers. That's all it's been. It's been right. beers. That's all it's been. So I I um listen to to, to the cameos. And I was going, I don't, we need to get to that plateau when people want cameos from us. Ten bucks. We'll do a can we'll do a ten, ten bucks. That's all it is. We'll, we'll do a cameo for ten. That's not bad. Ten bucks. Also, was listening to um I told you guys earlier, the um Eric Bischoff eighty three hours um excuse me, eighty three eighty three weeks podcast. And the man let me tell you, he was he did so much for WCW that doesn't he doesn't get credit for. Right. But the funny thing about it is when when the decline was happening, when he left and Russo came in and they brought him back in to try to fix shit, and he goes, "Yeah, no, I, I there's nothing I could do." They were reviewing Starcade 2000. We need to watch right. that. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that sounds fucking hilarious. That 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 episode was a fucking train wreck. That that, that show was a fucking train wreck. I watched Brian Zane's. Uh, I watched the Wrestling with the Regrets review of it, and it was just an absolutely awful. Wasn't there ninjas? Um, oh, ninety two. You're talking about? Yeah, no. No, no. Star K two thousand was. <laughs> woo! My yeah, God. Those, those were the nin the ninjas and fucking um, Buff Bagwell being re- the most important guy on the show. Yeah. Yeah, they, when you talk and we talk about it on the show where when you add too much gimmicks, it fucks up the whole pay per view. Yeah, this was the 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 quintessential meaning of how to fuck up a a, a pay per view. So well, many gimmick matches. It, it was the end of the fucking of the company itself. So yeah, so many gimmick matches, so much going down. It was just bad. It was just oh, it was it was atrocious. Boy. But um. 
other than that, when it came down to other things in wrestling, is just what we watched. And uh, yeesh, let's get a rundown of what is going I on. I miss what culture, man. I miss when it was good, man. I don't like how what culture is anymore. I miss the whole old, the old crew with the king and everything. I know they're on cultaholic, but it's not the same. It's unfortunate. I used to like really well dive into wrestling YouTube and uh, yeah, but you know what? Still, it's like oh, dude, it's just rough. It's hard. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not the same. It's still it, it it is what it is. But I mean, I I even was into um top ten list, and I don't even I don't know I don't even care anymore. I just like I said, my I, whole thing I do, now. I do rotations with my YouTube uh, and like my watching videos. I guess like one month I'll watch like wrestling extri- strictly, then I'll watch Howard Stern. Next month and the next month after that I'll watch unboxings and pack openings of cards. The next month I'll watch video games. Like every like every month I have to change it up. I tell you right now, my whole thing now is audiobooks. I'm I'm now getting well, into the, yep. the 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 audiobooks. That's been my new thing. I got my mom a tablet for Christmas, so now she could like finally get Amazon audio and uh, and uh, she could do it on her phone, but like the tablet is better. So now she says she's gonna watch, she's gonna she's gonna listen to some books herself. Oh, Frankie, we're gonna get into that. We're gonna we're gonna get to to, to SmackDown, and um, I'm very proud of that product this this week, man. It was a not great only show. not only because of the ratings, but because what they did, knowing as though it was pre recorded, what they did. So um, and it kind of it guys it kind of tells you. That um, just because it's not live doesn't mean it's not gonna be good. So uh, what do we got so far? What do you got on the rundown? So let's start off with Monday Night Raw. Is the night started off with Charlotte and Oscar opening the night. Charlotte saying that she joined Oscar because she was getting something out of it. That the first thing that came to my mind was, oh, how sweet. You said you just want. You said that. Um, which by the way. The fact that Charlotte calls Oscar her friend after the amount of rivalries and bullshit they've been through just makes me like, okay, what what am I missing here? Um, I'd have been like, oh, that's sweet. You just basically said you a whore. I'm a whore for a belt for gold, which <laughs> okay, okay, I guess that works out in the end. But um, you a whore. Nia and Shayna, of course, interrupt her, and Nia says that Charlotte sounds robotic. They have a holiday story that I'm not going over on this show because it was terrible. And uh, then Dana and Mandy Rose come out with new music. Uh, they get into the holiday spirit. They talk about um, they talk they talk about the, the the women's tag team titles. Which, by the way, um, Dana and and Mandy are now called the Sexy Muscle Friends. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, we had a we had a triple threat. Um, we had a triple threat tag team match. I uh, know. Wait. Sorry, no. It was um, Charlotte and Oscar was on commentary, and we had uh, Shayna and Nia versus the Sexy Muscle Friends, and uh, which also I'm sorry to say it um, earlier on I thought to mention it. Um, Dana Brooke actually and Mandy actually made a note to Charlotte's breast reduction surgery, saying um, these there are two things in the ring that aren't the same anymore. They used to be big, and now they're small. I'm like, all right, whatever. Corny, corny, corny. Um, but at the end of that match, we did have um, um, Shayna and Nia winning. Uh, they it was announced they will be um, they probably will be the they will get their rematch as expected. Uh, no surprise there. Um, of course, there was another match uh, with the the new uh, tag champions um, Charlotte and Asuka and Peyton Royce and Lacey Evans this week. Uh, I hate. The, the pairing of Lacey and Peyton, like you basically, once again, I'm gonna say it again. You broke up the best women's tag team, the Iconics, just to give me this. But that's um, what they did. I don't. What they what they end up doing, honestly, was just you had established tag teams and you just started breaking them up just to put like makeshift tag teams. It doesn't work. No, it's never a, in the and history. And does and they're pairing random ass fucking ladies, and it's like, come on, man. Yeah, never in the history of wrestling has this ever worked. Nope, and it never will. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, we we had the tag match, of course. Oscar and uh, Charlotte get the win there, uh, and then we have the VIP lounge where, um, of course, um, the the Hurt business come out with all the gold. Cedric Alexander interrupts Sheldon Benjamin to say that the titles now have prestige. Um, that the belts are gone from the pancakes and bootios and are here to make custom suits befitting of champions. We get a quick photo op and um, our truth 
Um, photo bombs the champion photo op, which causes some 24-7 confusion, of course. But then the Hardy Bros come out. <laughs> and I can't fucking believe what I listened to on this show. <laughs> They finally leaned into Riddle's weed guy persona this week saying, you just need to get toasted, man. You need to get lit. I, I, I wish we could play the audio. Uh, I told you. I told you. They're trying to get that stoner fucking audience. I told you. He cut a god-awful promo talking about how to get toasted. Um, it was terrible. This. Uh, listen, I get it. I want Matt Riddle to be Matt Riddle, but it's there's, there's also a point where it's like, okay, we all know this is going to be Matt Riddle and RVD to, um, coming soon. Um, it was painfully obvious they, it was about weed too, which is the funny part. It wasn't like a, a quick innuendo where it makes you scratch your head. It was clearly Matt Riddle saying, let's get high as fuck, um, which – I, why, why should I be surprised? The last couple of weeks he's been promoting and actually prom, um, creating new munchie items. So um, <laughs> why am I why am I not surprised? Jeff wasn't any better, by, might I add you. Jeff actually looked like he didn't want to be there. Um, but then they had a quick match. It was the Tag Champions versus Jeff and Matt, um, which, no, not Jeff and Matt Hardy. Jeff and Matt Riddle. Uh huh. They did. They did. They they literally just copied the Hardy brothers' um uh, moves. I've, they, ne they, I've, they, I've, I've never heard anybody call them the Hardy brothers. Now I have to call them that because <laughs> I have to call. I have to. I have to. I have to, to, to distinct them now. It's fucking annoying. They did the broetry in motion. Confirmed. They call it the broetry in motion. Um. Lashley pushed, pushed Jeff off the top rope. We got a quick back and forth. MVP hit the ball and elbow for a near fall. It was a pretty good match, but overall at the end, we got uh, MVP and Lashley picking up the win, and the Hurt Business is looking dominant. Happy to see that. That was a plus this week. Then we had T-Bar defeating Ricochet in a quick match. Um, uh, listen, positive. Hurt Business is getting more wins. Uh, that's a positive. The cons, they don't fucking matter. So uh, none of none of this matters. I think Vince. No, no, you're, not, you're talking about um, uh, retribution. Yes, so T Bar defeated Ricochet. Yeah, because you said, you said her business. Is, so I'm, the, I'm saying the pros and cons of this yeah. is the pros are that retribution are yeah. getting up, getting wins. Right. Cons, no one gives a fuck. And at the end of the day, um, how do you expect something to get to get over when every week it's a bipolar Vince McMahon saying one week I want them to go over, one week I don't, one week I do, one week I don't. One week I do, one week I don't. You can't do that. You either want them to get over or you don't. If you want them to get over, that has to be a process for weeks to come. If you don't, you bury them. I've never seen a faction come in that doesn't matter as much as this fucking... This, they don't this, matter. They this don't matter. Shit. And that's Vince's fault. You Vince tore up fucking... You tore up sets. You did all the shit that you did just, for to, for, yeah, just to prove that it means nothing. Um. So what's the gimmick now? Is, Retri is Retribution trying to still destroy WWE? Or are they just regular re wrestlers now with weird masks? That killed WWE gimmick kind of just faded into the darkness. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, but um, uh, once again, I could care less. Um, Ali and T-Bar say that f the fighting with Ricochet doesn't end until he either joins or they destroy him. But no, that's not how this works. WWE makes the matches every week, uh, besides Charlotte or Corbin, <laughs> and they decide who wrestles who. So I guess we're going to have some more back-and-forth bullshit with Ricochet in the next couple of weeks. We finally get a match with Angel Garza, but then he shows up on SmackDown in the Lumber match? Huh? Did he get traded, traded midweek? The dude wrestled on Raw. He beat Drew Gulak. It was a quick match. And I, and I did miss Angel Garza on the show. Of course, Garza hit the wing clipper and he picked up the win. But what I'm saying is, he was in the lum he was one of the lumberjacks on SmackDown. Eh? <laughs> it's like, what the so, fuck are we what doing? What the fuck? The fuck? What are we doing here? Uh, then of course we had Elias and Jackson Riker doing a, 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 a back and forth banter. We get Jackson Riker in his singles debut, basically mauling and destroying Grand Metalik. It was a fucking Jackson Riker is a skinnier Braun Strowman, in my opinion. But you know uh, what? It's a good booking, though. It's, it is, it, it is like, good booking. That's good know. booking. 
but we're, we're, I think we're starting to see a lot. Of, I think we're seeing a lot of changes with the wrestling industry as of late. I don't know if you're noticing it, but instead of managers, we're kind of getting bodyguards. Yeah. Like like we're drifting from the Maria Canellas's and the and the valets to more of the Kevin Nash and Diesel to the Shawn Michaels. But that's the way. Vibe. That's the way they book because it's easier for them to not say valets or managers it's easier to well, it's also a way to introduce i don't know wrestlers and, and, that, and, and, spot, and it's so. easier to slide them in as a tag team kind of thing so. yeah yeah i think the diesel and Shawn michaels way works and right especially with the guys like um like whatever the fucking guy's name is one year i i don't still don't know his name and uh jackson Riker. it works it gives it, it gives um it gives people like elias meaning while introducing a new giant so it, I'm, I, I'm not mad at it um, but god damn this show sucked uh, I just oh man I can't, I'm looking at it right now I'm just like over and over again I'm like alright I can't take this shit alright then we had two more no sorry we had a few more segments on Raw before we close it up here um, uh, let's just go through it quickly um, we had uh, a segment of Miz TV this week where Miz said he failed to become a two time WWE champion and apologized to his family for not bringing in the big bucks thank you Miz that's how you sell it the belt matters now like Roman's doing because it brings in that raise, and that's how you ah, should be selling it. Ah, but now they're they're they're, they're trying to bring uh, reality into uh, to wrestling because remember, um, he never cashed in. Morrison, Morrison cashed, cashed in. in, right? Which I'm so happy to see that because now I'm seeing the end result of Miz getting that briefcase again, and um, I'm actually happy to see that. Uh, and that might mean that these two guys may not be together for too long because he'll nope. blame him for losing the money in the bank. And I would hope so because more. Now sure. that's good storytelling. Yeah, they 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 care only in a few segments, and then they they throw the rest in the fucking um, bingo box, and they just take a guess what to do. Uh, he brought out AJ Styles and seemed like he was going to apologize to him. He said he took advantage of the opportunity, and of course AJ interrupted, saying he was the biggest idiot. Miz said that he was supposed to go to WrestleMania, um, so the Miz decided to offer a role in the new Marine to AJ and almost. That's his name, almost. Really, guys? Uh, and Miz tried to make it seem like Morrison was the one who cashed in a TLC, so he wants his briefcase back like we just mentioned. Um, wow. We actually might see Miz be the briefcase holder again. Uh, Drew interrupts, and then it got even worse. This is the worst part of Raw, and I know I, I called Red about this because this was terrible. Um, last week, we had the Nightmare Before TLC garbage, and this week, we had a sequel. <laughs> and guess what it was called? The Nightmare After TLC. Ladies. Wow, the wrong button there. Um, but hey, I, I covered it, though. I picked it yeah, up quick. Saved it. We got Drew, Sheamus, and Keith Lee joined with pieces of paper rhyming. Rhyming like a Christmas tale about destroying them in the ring. It was like Drew McIntyre started, and it was like, on day's nightfall, the snow came down. And Why Keith Lee was like, and Keith Lee was like, and we all came here to beat you like clowns. Why would they do this? <laughs> Why would they do this? I had nightmares after watching this. <laughs> Why would they do this? And you know what? I and you know, and the first thing you told me on the phone was, no way, they're making Drew do this kind of shit. Nobody. No. Why would anyone appreciate this? No one cares about this. They don't. They don't, bro. It's bad. This is bad. Who thinks this is a good idea? Like I said, they tapped out for the rest of the year. They're on reset mode in January. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, they, not, have, they, they have, have to be. About this epi- they did not give a fuck about this episode. It's clear as day. But it's crazy how Raw is so bad and SmackDown is getting so much fucking love. It because reminds- why? Because Paul Heyman's on that show. But it reminds me of the like the late 90s when, you know, SmackDown and not even the late 90s, sorry. Maybe, maybe the early 2000s, mid-2000s when the SmackDown 6 was there. And people were, you know, they were they were rushing to watch SmackDown, and Raw was okay. Raw is just right. bad, and it's not about the three hours. I don't care what nobody tells me. It's not about the three hours. You could give me three hours of football. People watch three hours of basketball, football, whatever. But it has to be good. And guess what? It's not. It's not good. Exactly. Exactly. So, 
I think Raw needs a big rehaul again. But but I, but I feel like we I feel like we're beating a dead horse. I feel like we keep saying this. Raw needs an overhaul. Raw needs a change. We keep saying that, and we're getting the same. Hey, bullshit. listen. I, you know, I, I got. Gotta... You know, honestly, honestly, it reminds me of like a person who's who 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 who's told to change their ways, changes for two weeks, and then goes right back to their normal shit. It's like a it's like a a cheating man or a cheating woman. Yes. Yes, and they think that because they changed for two weeks that they're back on track. No. No, it takes more than just one week to get better. You need to fucking be consistent with the change. Not just a one-week change, not a week, not a two-week change. You need to fucking you need to fucking be consistent. Raw is not consistent. Why is your WWE champion? Why is the face of your company saying Christmas carols? Remember, we hear the fans. Why is Keith Lee Remember rhyming that? with Christmas? Remember, we hear the fans. Yeah, where? With deaf ears? Yeah, we hear the fans. No, they they really don't. They really don't. They really fucking don't. So, after that, we had a brawl between all men, all the men in the ring. It was fucking dumb. I, I, I just don't know what to say. Um... Then, of course, we had the uh, Randy Orton segment where he comes out saying that the Fiend is gone. The Fiend is dead. The Fiend burned. And he could still f- smell the burning flesh. Orton recalled his murder last night <laughs> from, last, uh, from the night before <laughs> and said that all he could hear in his head now were the Fiend's gasps for air. This is the most mature thing we're getting on WWE programming right now, honestly. Um, and Randy had a good way to sell it. And no, it was not from karaoke with Bohemian Rhapsody. Not yet, anyway. Um, the lights turn off. We think the Fiend's back. And we get Alexa Bliss on a sex swing. I know, I'm sorry. I mean a playground swing. Yeah, that's what a lot of fucking horny simps. virgins were looking at it as. As simps. Um, <laughs> um, Alexa was um, in Alexa's playground. The fiend built it for Alexa. She said, Oh, how nice. She made some burning jokes and some burning innuendos about, you know, the fiend being burned to a crisp. Happy holidays. Yeah. And then said the fiend absorbed into the earth, uh, and said that if you ever, if he ever returns, it would be unlike anything Orton ever saw before the lights go off again. And when they come back, we're met on with the commentary team. That makes that made, I hate when they do that. Uh, red, what do you thought about, um, the way Alexa Bliss returned and um, is playing the revival, uh, the, the the revival of the Fiend because, well, after, I, liked I liked it. Well, after after um, TLC, they had the um, the chrysalis and all that stuff. So um... I'm expecting a new mask change. It was, there, there's a picture of Bray Wyatt back at his, the person who made his first mask um, recently, and they're they're talking about maybe making a new uh, a whole new getup. You know, I I I also like the. Um... I like the idea that they they once again go away and then I'll miss you and you could come back. And I think the fiend is that character who needs that the most because after a while it get boring and it could it, it could die. It really could. So I saving get, that, I get scared though because you know you, how many times can you get lightning in a bottle when you get the character like the fiend. It's rare, bro. Yeah, it's rare. Yeah. I, don't th- I, I, don't, I think the Fiend is the success story of W. The success story. Let me of ask WWE. you this. Let me ask you this. I know you love the 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 Mister Rogers part of it. Do yeah. You think, do you think that that could still run? You think it's a, uh, that gimmick could still run? Nope. And I'm actually looking forward to one day the Fiend burning down the Firefly Funhouse and it being Br- Fiend exclusive. Nicole says that yes, Alexa sells this so well. She does. I. She I does. Although, like I said before, I was like, I could have seen Nikki Cross doing it, but Alexa is the better uh, look for this one. Yeah, Alexa is, and it works perfectly. It really does. Um, Alexa, uh, Alexa comes. It's played very well, and I'm happy that she she did this. Uh, to be honest, and damn you that yeah. your name is Alexa, because now all my fucking um home gadgets are going off. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm saying boop boop. Well, that's why I want to say boop boop, but I, boop, I forgot. Boop boop boop. Hey, oh uh, yeah, Mook Mook. Um, so you know it's working well, and I think the Fiend will um, come back better than ever with a new costume, a new a new look. Um, it would be awesome that like the lantern turns to the to the Fiend's old mask, and like we get a new like more mature, violent kind of uh, a look. Mm. Every year he should make a change, I guess. Um, whatever. He's gonna come back looking like Bane. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be mad at that. Um, Jimbo, I'm happy you're feeling better, fan. Exactly. 
Uh, and then we had the, to close out the show the holiday street fight as it was. Uh, okay, um, you know what? Honestly, I I said once I saw the presents and shit, I was like, oh. it was lame. I can't. Someone, got, someone got someone got hit in the head with a present. Sheamus got put through a table. Um, there was candy cane kendo sticks. Um, almost, which by the way, almost who by the way was the manager for their team of that night grabs the teammate of AJ Styles and just. Drops them on a table. Like I said, I, I, um, um, okay. We like, already know once the holidays happen, this is gonna, this is gonna, gonna occur. We, we know this is gonna, this is gonna be the jump off. So, yeah, I, 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 I didn't care. Don't give a fuck. Once again, another bad week of Raw. It just, it was know. terrible. Uh, and we closed off with, once again, Keith Lee with the spirit bomb. I'm happy he got the win there, but it was a match that didn't matter and it fucking sucked. Um, right. Sheamus, Sheamus broke kicks Keith Lee at the end of the match, and it is uh, the seeds being planted to Sheamus and Drew McIntyre, uh, which I'm very excited for. And to be honest, I'm actually getting scared we might get that for WrestleMania because the slow buildup is looking like it's going to take place around Royal Rumble? He, or I don't know. We'll see. But um, that's definitely the seeds being planted right now Sheamus and Drew. Um, so that was raw. It sucked. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's let's move on. Um, the episode of AEW didn't have that many major moments this week, but I know Red wants to go on a rant about Sting, so let's just jump right into the Sting segment. Uh, Tony Schiavone interviewed Sting in the ring this week. Sting reiterated that it feels great to come full circle back to the jungle. That the is jungle, but the jungle of what? I guess that was just his wordage. Yeah, but the jungle um, of what? I mean. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, no, no, I, because I didn't know AW had trees. Because and... I hear the I hear the, the fans screaming, "Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to what you was you never got here. you were never in AEW." I guess they're associating with TNT, but still, that doesn't matter. But that's it, like, once again, that's like that's like Sting going on the mat. That's like Sting going on NBA on TNT. And they're like, "Welcome back, welcome back." It's like, no. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah. It, as 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 goofy as people may say, yeah. All it is is what we've been saying here for the longest on the wow. show is AEW is nothing but WCW 2.0. Basically. And that's all it is. You guys who sit there and bash, oh, you guys have the old mindset. You need to you need to, to, to lighten up and get some new. No. 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 You're into the old shit too because you love that thing is back. Yep. The fuck? Of course, Darby Allen's in the rafters. Um, <laughs> Nicole's like, how do you come back to something new? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. Welcome back. It's like I just debuted in the major league. Welcome back. It's like, what are you talking about? Just because I play baseball doesn't mean <laughs> welcome like, back. Just because I played in double A doesn't mean I deserve a welcome back chant when I hit the majors. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Um, the fuck? Sting Sting went on, a, went on a spiel about how he received a break from Dusty Rhodes to boost him into main event matches with Ric Flair. He did a Dusty Rhodes impression, which really, uh, <laughs> everybody, really? every there's always two impressions that everybody does in wrestling: Dusty, it's Dusty, and, and Macho Man. Yep. You yep. can't. You, there's no way you won't. And, and and the new favorite, John Laurinaitis. Everyone oh, does. Yeah, he, yeah. Everyone does junk because his voice sounds like he smokes 85 packs a day. Yeah. Um, People power. <laughs> Sting says that seeing Cody Rhodes lead AW made him want to help lead the charge. Lead the charge to what? To be a veteran leader, I guess. I guess. Um, and then we get Taz coming out saying he's sick of Sting sticking his nose in their business. The crew inch toward um, the ring and with violence on their minds. The lights go out. The lights are on. Which, by the way, good job on AW production this week, as. The lights went off and the lights went on, expecting us to say, wait, Darby was just in his seat up in the rafters. How'd that happen? <gasps> but it's funny because three minutes before that happened, the camera cut to Darby and you saw him walking you out of his You saw him leave. Seat. I saw him leave. So let me explain something to you. Oh, come on. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let, let's do a check down here. There's one, two, three, four, five guys, two guys in a ring, and mind you, if you if you saw the camera pan, who the fuck would have even known that Sting had a bat in his hand Nobody. and that Darby had a skateboard in his hand? 
Well, Sting whipped it out from his uh his jacket. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you looked after a while, you go, huh? Where, where the fuck did that come from? Yeah, it's like what? So first of all, if I'm looking, if I'm doing weights and measures, I'm gonna fuck up the kid that got a skateboard in his fucking hand. I mean, <laughs> have you ever tried to swing a skateboard? Hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's not that easy. Not no, that it's easy not. to fuck somebody. I to beat the shit out of him. And the guy with the bat. We'd have got around that shit because I know somewhere in wrestling, there's a chair underneath a fucking ring. There's, a, there's something around it. So, right. Or well, I can just go, go in the back and grab a weapon and come back out. So I'm uh, going okay. gonna to believe that this skinny fuck with a skateboard and this 61-year-old in a with a bat is going to be able to beat the shit out of five guys. Yeah... Not next, next. This um, this doesn't we had, make we, any we had, sense. We had an announcement that, it oh, doesn't right. make sense. Of course it does. That's AW. AW should be should, should be should stand for all of the what the fuck is this? Um, <laughs> we find out that on January sixth. AWTF. Yeah, AW AW AWTF. Honestly, that's um, gonna be the new moniker for the fuck yeah. t- tabloid. It's gonna be AWTF. <laughs> A AEW the fuck. Um. We find out on January 6th it'll be Brian Cage versus Darby Allen for the TNT title. We get a quick stare down between Darby Allen and Sting, and we move on. What did this get? Nothing. Um, it did, the, the only positive of this segment for me was Ricky Starks shining with his promo work. I swear to God. Uh, what um, did they call Ricky Starks? They called him. The Rock Wannabe. <laughs> They said, they, said, they said all he's missing is the fanny pack. <laughs> and no one AEW, they're going to make him wear it next week. <laughs> exactly. Then we have Chris Jericho and MJF defeating Top Flight. Uh, Jake Hager was ringside for this match. Um, Top Flight was quick, speedy, and flippy for Jericho and MJF, MJF to handle in the early uh, going of the yeah, match. flippity do. Uh, Top Flight had supposedly got got a really positive uh, um, review from people, um, the NBA fans that like saying Top Flight reminded them of the Motor City Machine Guns. Nobody I... in NBA said that. Yes, they nobody, did. Nobody said that because anybody people who on like, Twitter, people on Twitter, nobody said, it. said that. I'm sorry, that's okay. bullshit. They said that they, the young Motor City Machine Guns of old. They were my, they said they're quick, they're, they're 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 agile, they're young. All right, let's 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 be real. How many fucking NBA fans really know who the fuck that Motor City Machine Guns are? Sorry, about? sorry, sorry. I'll scratch that. Fans on Twitter in general said There you go. That, that that's people they- off from the NBA said that Jericho's fat and old and they remind him of Mr. <laughs> and, and, and that they remind that he reminds them of Mr. Krebs without the show. <laughs> So that's that. Sorry, sorry to clear that hey, up. Thank uh, you, please, please um, clean that up. <laughs> um, Chris Jericho was the flame roast of the night, but then at the end we got, of course, the inner circle with the win. MJF with a heat seeker pile driver for the win. After the match, we get um, Jake Hager grabbing a microphone, which that's always a bad sign. Um, grabbing the mic to challenge Wardlow next week. We're gonna get Jake Hager versus Wardlow. Next week. I'm sorry, man. I'm looking at the fucking feed. Fucking JD posted. I'm telling you, Sting versus Flair TNT title match. What they're looking at. And Nicole writes back, Sting and Flair, pacemaker on a pole match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Honestly, you're right. <laughs> Coming soon, man. Coming soon. What nitroglycerin on a pole match? <laughs> Honestly. The N95 on a, on a pole oh, fucking match. This is ridiculous. It's oh. terrible. Um, um, Jake Hager challenged this challenges Wardlow because he was upset that Wardlow hasn't been around to carry his share of the load. Hager understands that Wardlow is an asset, but he also views Wardlow as an asshole. Ah, that's so funny. Um, people Crickets are, considering... are getting really played this week, aren't they? AW, AW is booking this match as the horse fight of the century. No. It, it it's really not. It's really not. <laughs> I understand they have to sell it that way, but it's not going to be that way. I with understand the, like you're a company you need with to sell the your monster. But the other, you got Miro, you got um, Powerhouse, you got Brian Cage, you got monsters that's there. You're gonna book it as the. <sighs> Uh, okay. The horse fight. Uh, then, then we had an amazing segment between MJF and Santana and Ortiz. MJF goes out and um. 
and I, and honestly, a very genuine and um, I, I I really enjoyed the the, the acting here. Uh, MJF saying that he understands the loss of loved ones this year, uh, and that he uh, that to keep your head up and that he'll you know I'll, I'm there for you guys. Santana and Ortiz give that they give each other handshakes, a hug, and wisdom. And even Ortiz shook MJF's hand this week. Uh, MJF um, plotting to gain the trust of Santana and Ortiz. I thought it was a very interesting scene. You did? Uh, I did. I, I liked it. I thought it fucking sucked. I thought it was oh, come so on. bad. That was so. I don't, I don't think bad. the acting was that bad. The lead, no, the lead in. And I didn't like the beginning with the camera guy opening the door. Like, I, like I said, I, I when you when you hear the episode, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm a, uh, I was a theater guy and all this shit. The lead in to going into there, there was no sincerity, there was no genuine feeling of remorse. When MJF was going into the room, he was like, "I'm gonna go into the room," and he said he that was his promo, and then he walked in. He didn't sell me at all. I thought it was fucking dreadful. I was like, I'm gonna, I, I said, I'm gonna hate, I'm gonna hate this more than anything else. Um, listen, I uh, saw it. I was like, this is gonna be bad. And he goes, and my uncle, my my grandfather Stan Hart. <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay, whatever. Um, He's Jewish. Have- whose name? Whose name Hart in in the Jewish community? Kind of have a point there. Get at me. Get at me. So next up. Uh, then we had Jurassic Express defeating Cocabana 5 and 10. Up next we had Pac. No, no, I'm <laughs> uh, 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 Of course, the Jurassic Express win. Then we get a quick uh, video package with FTR saying that they challenged, Lucha, they challenged Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy to a match on January 6th. FTR is on a personal quest to regain the tag titles until he Blanchard had threatened to harm. He threatened harm to Marco Stunt if he gets involved. I would love to see. Why? Why are they even? Why Don't is he... ask me. They suck. No, why is not. he still there? <laughs> like, why is he... Two guys that need to be cut like tomorrow. Marco and fucking Joey Janela. Gone. Really? Sorry, Sonny. You too. You're going to be leaving soon. So. And it's sad because both of them are like from New York. <laughs> and sorry, Sonny. You're going to be leaving soon. I'm sorry. Really? Yeah, it's going to happen. It's coming? Yeah. They they won't uh, cut anybody now because they don't want to look like assholes. So they're gonna try to make that three year commitment. They're gonna try, but after a while they're gonna be like, yeah, it's not working, guys. You gotta go. Mark my words. I said it now, before the year is done. By, be, be uh, by. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think, but I'm trying to think. Maybe September, October, 2021, they'll be gone. Wow. Yeah. Um that's that's a that's a that's a hot take if I heard one. But I agree with you. They're fucking Those three. Coming. Those three will be gone. Uh, listen, we'll see. We'll see. Uh then we had Pac. We had Pac defeating Butcher. We had Blade, Bunny, and Pentagon were ringside. While Eddie Kingston was on commentary, of course. Not mad at that at all. He's great uh, on commentary. Yeah, but you know what? It's just you water down but your talent by too you, much. Yeah, by always putting them on on promos and shit like that, you do that. It's just uh, doesn't work. yeah, and I get that. It's better uh, if you to put him on 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 a um, ringside. It would have been a better look for him. Uh, of course, at the end of the match, it's like had, I said about Ar- Ar- um, Orange Cassidy last week. Uh, at the end of the match, of course, we had Pac um, using the distraction from um, um, from Kingston trying to cause problems. Of course, Lance Archer came out to cut off Kingston's path. Uh, Pac used Lance Archer's distraction to strike with a roundhouse kick and black arrow to win the match. At the end, we had Archer chatting with Pac, saying to stay out of his way so he could pummel Kingston. I am so confused here. I was going to ask you, and that's exactly what I was going to ask you. I was, uh, is it me, or does this not make any sense at all in any of this shit? I don't know. I, I I wish I could tell you even why Lance Archer is pissed off at Eddie Kingston in the first place. No, but the other thing is, I don't understand. I get why Pac and I get I get why Pac's in this program. I no, don't get, no, 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 Lance no. Archer the the Archer Eddie thing is because of um all out when, remember um Eddie wasn't supposed to be eliminated from the the battle royale. I get that. That's what that the whole program. That that's what Ed, exactly is this an extent. But my payoff is. 
I I I don't I don't want to see a triple threat with Lance, Pac, and Eddie. I don't that that doesn't that doesn't benefit anybody. I don't even care if Pac and fucking Lance Archer have a beef. If you're gonna keep the Eddie and and Lance Archer beef going, I get that. If you wanted to keep Pac and Eddie going on, okay, maybe whatever. But all this tangible going, it's it's too much. Is it? It, 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 it doesn't make It's like you're putting too much ingredients in a fucking In the soup It doesn't make any sense <laughs> What a reference Yeah, it's, it's way too much you, you, You're putting chicken in a beef stew Why? Why would you do that? How uh, dare you? How would you add chicken in a beef stew? Makes no sense Right, and like I said, I agree uh, I think it's way too much I think it's too many kiss shifts in the kitchen I, I... <laughs> Frankie goes. I haven't watched a full month, a full episode of AEW since the first month or so. <laughs> Don't blame you, bro. Don't Who blame does? Me. Uh, then we had the wedding date announced. We had Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford will tie the knot on February third on the beach break themed episode of Dynamite. How are you doing a beach themed episode in February? <laughs> That's like having a show on December 25th called The Luck of the Irish. <laughs> that makes no fucking sense. The Luck sense. of the Irish in fucking in, in November. Shiva- in November. Shivani's, Tony Schiavone is going to be freezing his balls off in his bathing suit. <laughs> there, did you see when when, when Shivani was doing the um the, the stink um, interview and his hair was lopped over because the wind was blowing? Yep, yep. <laughs> The flop, the flu. It was like, we're bringing Sting! And his fucking hair was all... <laughs> it was all his face and yeah, shit. Yeah, it was, it was, it was terrible. I fuck? love Shivani, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> um, Miro, Miro trolled us by pretending the best friends in Orange Cassie were going to ruin the announcement, but instead, Trent was being loaded into an ambulance, and of course, that implied that Miro did the damage... Um. Nobody cared. Once again, it was a quick uh, announcement. Nobody cares about Kip Sabian and Penelope getting married. No one cares about Miro right now. The best friends are irrelevant. Um. Tony Schiavone's hair is irrelevant. <laughs> Let's move on. We had, Dustin Rhodes defe- we, had, we had Dustin Rhodes defeating Evil Uno. Um. After the match, I don't even care. I think Dustin Rhodes with a running bulldog. Really? <laughs> In 2020, we're running by winning. I, 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 in 2020, we're winning. We're, we're winning, winning by a, a match bulldog. by running bulldog when fucking um Canadian destroyers, three of them, are getting kicked out of. <laughs> Dustin, Dustin beats Dustin beats Evil Uno with a running bulldog, but dudes fucking hit Evil Uno with a double <laughs> double tombstone pile driver into a super kick, and he kicks out at one. You know what? You know what okay. reminds me. You know what reminds me of what we need to do is like you know how in boxing or wrestling video games, where you see that the 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 body is getting beaten. So yep. before the match starts, they should show that Evil Uno has like yellow. Right. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like what? The when fuck? it gets red, that means he can get knocked out quick. Like, yeah, like, like, yeah, exactly. Like the fucking health meters. <laughs> it's like the health meters, right? Uh, after the match, Uno was on his knees trying to recruit Rhodes to join the Dark Order. Right, like that's gonna happen. Dustin, <laughs> Dustin teased a handshake. No, no, yo, no, 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 no. Fuck this! I believe that it can happen. Oh, well, in AEW, that, anything can happen. Exactly. With AEW, stupid shit will happen. He will be in dark order. It won't be um um Adam Page. It'll be fucking Dustin who joins that shit. Right. And after Dustin gave him the bird, of course, Grayson attacked. The QT Marshall comes in for the save. And then and then uh, Lee Johnson clears the ring with a springboard drop kick. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know what to say there. Um, uh, uh, Filler. Then we had Sean Spears sitting down with Shivani to discuss his current standing in the business. Spears tosses the black glove aside. He's done with that gimmick already. That lasted two months. <laughs> he believes he is more talented than 95% of the roster. Good job, buddy, putting over, putting over the other 5%. Um, and yet there is still a glass ceiling over him. Spears left WWE for that reason, and now he senses the same thing is happening to him in AEW. Um, and um, to sell this even more, supposedly this interview was so controversial that AEW took Sean Spears off the roster on the website. The only thing I, I do like what's controversial about that? I do appreciate that sell of them doing I that do too. But like, but for what, what? Like, like people have done way worse. No, no. But I say I do appreciate that sell. 
<laughs> the dark right, order is turning. <laughs> the dark order is turning into BWO. Thank you, JD, for that. <laughs> it's turning into horse shit. Um, I I appreciate that sell that they took him off the the roster, but um, uh, doesn't WWE do that? Or no. I, yeah, no, they do. When when they want to move, it's rare. Uh, but they do do it. They do it. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, but I, I, I'll be honest with you, Sean Spears. I love, I love the gimmick idea that like I'm better than this, but you're really not. Yeah. So, like, like, like at the end of the day, like they're giving Sean Spears this praise, and I'm like, dude, you were Stan in 06. You're a mid guy. Come you're on, a mid, man. You're a mid guy. Like, it, like it, I, it, I, I hate, I, I hate when people don't understand their role and their place in the company, and it's like Sean. Um, we but, get it. You were a former WWE superstar. The ten was over. The ten was over. I got you. Ten, ten, ten. Right. Your wrestling did not match that other, and you have to understand you're fucking you're, you you do have a ceiling no, Sean, no, no, because unfortunately you do have a ceiling and it's not the ceiling you think you're it is but not only that of course the powers that be are telling you to do this thing right but then what what what's what's the 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 end game for it like we, we we'll put you in a scenario where you're supposed to leave the promotion or you're upset with the promotion but what you're gonna fucking challenge Kenny Omega for whatever the, like what 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 is it that we're doing here? Like, uh, it, it's once again, it doesn't that's it's like, that shouldn't be his gimmick. Like, no, to me, I would have said that's Adam Page's like a mean event you know guy. Gimmick, you know, you know, you know what I would do? I would turn Scorpio Sky heel and make him that make that. You know what? Guy. Exactly, Scorpio Sky would have been the better guy for that. Because you know what, his ceiling hasn't been reached yet. Right. That dude's a main event star. Scorpio so. Sky would have been a better guy for that position. You're right. Make him turn heel, leave the fucking SCU bullshit, and fucking make that gimmick going. Yo, where is my where is my time? Or yeah, exactly. Or even a guy who's about to leave the promotion, like um, like Christopher Daniels. Yeah. Let him get Paul Bernard, the fallen angel gimmick. Like, right. Whatever. Give him like... that that last one shot. Right. And I'm thinking about this on the whim. We're thinking about this on the hip. They have weeks to think about this stuff. <laughs> They have weeks to think about this shit, and I find and I find a good replacement on the fucking humble. Exactly, fuck good for here. you. You do good for you. You do too. Thank Christopher you, Daniels works as well. Um, but Tony Khan has weeks. But let's smoke weed. Um, <laughs> allegedly, uh, alle allegedly, allegedly, uh, allegedly, right, and all that, whatever. Hikaru Shida defeats Alex Gracia in a quick match, Next. but of course. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, oh no, no. I have to mention this. Abaddon bite it, bit Sheeta in the neck like a zombie. Did we not see this before? I don't. I don't know anymore. The women's division is as worse as my love life. Um. <laughs> then we had the young bucks defeating the acclaimed in the main event. I think. Uh. Oh wait. No, was it the main event? No. Uh, yes, it was the oh, main yeah, event. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, it was. What do you think? What do you think about the Acclaims mixtape uh, music video? <laughs> I actually thought it was funny though. I ain't gonna lie. I, I like the creativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was funny though. I'm happy they're actually trying. I'm but here's, but here's my shit about this. It's like you goof on everything that WWE does, but you're doing WWE shit. And you know what? I'm okay with this match. Young Bucks Acclaimed sounds fun, but you know what the problem is that everyone doesn't understand. Why are the tag titles on the line? I don't get it. I really. Why don't. is there a championship they match need every to... fucking week? Well, because they. Earn... It makes your belt irrelevant. It what? makes your belt irrelevant. I don't care about winning the belt anymore because I could honestly come in your company and get a championship match because I won two matches on dark. No, no, no. Because they cut that out. No, they won six matches on dark. Oh, and... against who? Dang, nobody gives the a Pringles fuck. man. <laughs> No, I don't want to hear that shit. The, the Pringles and Quaker guys. That's what I they want. I guess so. Kool-Aid Man and Ronald McDonald. Like, I don't fucking care. But that, that doesn't earn you a championship match. And JD makes a good reference. He goes, uh, um, what are we doing about your AEW championship? Oh, we're chasing it on impact. <laughs> it's like, it's true. It's like, what are it's we true. doing here? True, it's true. Your AEW champion is... Doing AEW is doing impact yep. shit. It's true. It's true. Uh, we had uh the Young Bucks, of course, the fear the acclaim. The tag straps were on the line. What did you expect? Uh, what do you thought about the match overall? Because I have nothing to say about it besides just your overview of the match. It's it's a it's a it's a typical Young Bucks match with 
private party or some shit like that. It's nothing. It's nothing. I and 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 I, this is gonna be probably that people don't uh, agree with me with. But every, you know now there's certain websites, and I don't I don't understand how these websites are saying this that the Young Bucks is probably the greatest tag team of all time. Eat my ass. I don't get this. I don't. And it's not because I'm an old school guy. It's because. How? Because you could put a 45 minute match together? That doesn't make a great fucking match. I don't get it. No, Mind it you, I have enjoyed a lot of Young Buck matches, but I don't see, I'm not saying that they're the greatest of all fucking time. I don't see they're it. They're not. They're not. No, I don't get it. But uh, in this match, I um, I didn't see any elevation, just like with the um the top flight one. I didn't see any any any, any elevation. Ele- um, sorry, elevation for um the uh, the the acclaim for this match as well. I di- I didn't see it. I don't I don't know how you make them better because that's what AEW is about. We well, you know we just want to elevate the new guys that are coming. You're not. You're really not. You're actually hurting them by doing this shit. But right, whatever. Next up. Um, so after that match, we had a quick, uh, well, in between the show, we had a quick segment between, uh, what's her fucking name? Jade Cargill congratulating Brandy on her motherhood and to send out new talent. And then we had finally Kenny Omega and Don Callis sharing their thoughts about their title match next week. Omega pointing out how Phoenix has a history of choking. When the phone rings and Omega answers the call to win belts. And when Phoenix answers, he trips over his own feet and gets injured. That was AEW once again. I just don't know what they think is going to get over, but okay. Uh, whatever. You're just making your talent look like a fucking klutz by doing stupid shit like that. Yeah, exactly. I just, I don't know. I don't know what to say anymore. Um, NXT, we had NXT this week. NXT kicked off with the tag team street fight. Does every single fucking WWE program during the holidays need to have a street fight? Of just course. Saying. We got to draw uh, an audience somewhere or another. A tag team street fight between Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch and Drake Maverick and Killian Dane. The match helped re- reestablish Drake Maverick as more of a joke. Um, once again, it was fucking terrible. Um, what do you thought about this opening? I wasn't a fan of it. Didn't care about it. Didn't care about both these guys. It shouldn't have been on on the opener. It was a uh, uh, it was a uh, uh, try to uh, try to pull in an audience, but. Um, we said the tag team division in NXT is not really that good, so... Uh, it's very, very poor. It's thin. It's very thin. It's thinner than a fucking Lay's chip. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, at the, only Lorcan and Burt's one, of course. Um, Drake Maverick is... I don't even know how he's in the business. I'll be honest. He doesn't... I, I just don't get it. Uh, Should have kept him as a I like, fucking man. Yeah, yeah, I like him as more of as a manager than anything else. I just yeah. don't... Listen, I get the young Mighty Mouse, the underdog, right? I just don't get it. It doesn't sell for me. And uh, I think Killian Dane could be doing way better solo. <laughs> JD's like, it was a street fight, but they were tagging in and out. Yeah. It, it's true. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't make any sense. It's true. It's true. Same thing on Raw. There was a street fight, and they were tagging people in. Uh, yeah. Okay. What's the point of that? Um, Velveteen Dream is back, and he's wearing a shower cap. Um <laughs> Yeah, you gotta keep that. You gotta keep. You gotta keep your shit wavy, man. God, yeah, stop playing with a shower cap. Don't you mean a doobie? Uh, yeah, you do the same thing with shower cap. No, that's that's for your um your juicy. You gotta keep the juicies. You gotta keep your head juicy. I'm white, so I don't know anything you're saying right now. Uh, <laughs> um, Adam Cole is is being interviewed. Um, Velveteen Dream talks shit. They have a match later on in the night. Just a quick banter. We had a very Gargano Christmas this this, this week, and uh, the celebration uh, was a bunch of comedy bits through in, in between the show with segments. It took place at their home involving gift giving and some caroling. You know what I watch wrestling for? Wrestling. To, to laugh. Oh, really? I watch wrestling because I want to laugh. Oh, nice. I, I've always thought about wrestling to say, you know, I need a good chuckle right now. I need a belly roll <laughs> laugh when I watch wrestling. <laughs> a belly roll laugh. <sighs> All right. <laughs> There are some funny bits. People saying it's funny. Um, Johnny gifting Indy Hartwell a PS5 box without the PS5. Uh, the PS5 is actually mine, Gargano said. Uh, cold dude. Luckily, he had a gift he really appreciated, which was an official Gargano family nickname. Guess what they named her? Indy Wrestling! Ha <laughs> ha! 
and even set up a We Support Indie Wrestling pun. You know what would have been funny if he would have fucking gave it a PS5 box and it had a Wii U in it or some shit yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, make it if work. If you wanted to be an asshole, you could have did that shit. Right. SmackDown was funny, though, with the PS5 um joke. I don't know if you heard on SmackDown. We'll talk about it. Daniel Bryan was like, what's wrong with oh, this yeah, game? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And get a PS5? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was funny. Uh, this, um, okay. Indie wrestling. She's so bad and irrelevant. They need to give her a funny name like this. Okay. Um, Johnny gave his love, not the North American title, but he did zoom it in when he discussed the love of his life. Um, Shotzi Blackheart um, with her destroyed tank. Kenneth LeRae still has a program of Blackheart, and this is a nice reminder of its roots, I guess. Um, Austin Theory is the big dull goof in the group, and it sucks to see. Um, because I love Austin. I Theory. don't even say. I, I don't even get why is he here. I really don't. I like know. Austin Theory, but like, okay, why what, is he what, here? What now? What now? This, um, this is this is just one of those things to where it's like this kid is, is paying his dues, wherever the fuck it is. And this why he doesn't deserve yep. this. And you know who also doesn't deserve wins? Leon Ruff, because Leon Ruff rolled up Timothy Thatcher this week. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, come on. I'm sorry. What the fuck, bro? What the fuck? And you know what, JD? You're right. We should be talking about how good is wrestling, but we're not. We're talking about why comedy is it, it's true. It, 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 it's bullshit. But Leon Ruff rolled up Timothy Thatcher this week. Thatcher was distracted by um, Tommaso Ciampa as he waited for um, Ciampa to come out. Hey, a win's a win, but it's good to see Ruff. No, I'm really not. I'm reading the notes, and I'm like, no. Ruff is – I'm not happy to see Ruff beat Timothy Thatcher. Ciampa then drops you just, Thatcher. You just bur- – you keep burying Thatcher. You just, you brought Thatcher yeah. in as his fucking – as his Pure wrestler pure healer, wrestler guy, and you keep burying him as some bullshit. This is the epitome of what is known as buried. Yeah, absolutely. This is, he's being buried. For um, you, for all you marks that think you know what the fuck you're talking about, this is the pure epitome, epitome of what is being buried. I am, I'm, I, I am excited for um, 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 a what they announced will be Ciampa and Thatcher in a pit, fight pit match. Which last time we saw a fight uh, pit, pit match. fight match, pit fight, uh, pit fight. Uh, yeah, I, enjoyed, what we saw. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed and it. And Thatcher better win this shit. Yeah, that, if Thatcher doesn't win, I'm calling his career in WWE an absolute failure. Yep. Uh, Isaiah Scott got his win back from Jake Atlas this week, and he wasn't gracious in victory, giving Atlas the suck it sign. Okay. Um, I guess we are going to get Swerve as a heel. Um, do you like really? Do you really? Impact. Do you really want to give Jake Atlas the suck it sign? Yeah, I know, right? Because I'll do it. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 I can't say it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't say it. All right. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm glad you did it, not me. <laughs> I, ap- I apologize. I apologize. I for serve up the pinch for, abso- for absolutely nothing. I, don't I give serve a up the pinch and he hits it out the park, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you know what? I, I don't apologize. Fuck you, honestly. Um, Fuck it's a you. Joke. It's a joke. Take a fucking joke. Um... Uh, then we had Zeely and Boa went through their torture again this week, but they seemed into it this week. They actually liked it. Guess they'll be on TV soon now that they've survived their training. Oh, God. Um, Bronson Reed beats Ashante the Adonis in a squash match because he's finally back and he has Godzilla on his shoulders. What do you think about Bronson Reed? I'm glad he's back, and um, he's a guy that needs to work more on his uh, uh, charisma, if anything. But, yeah, that comes that comes in time. More yeah. mic work, more opportunity. But other than that, his ring work is actually solid. I I, I fucks with him. Uh, Tyler Rust with Malcolm Bivens. They're really trying to give Malcolm Bivens anyone, huh? Uh, defeated Arya Davari this week. This makes him one and zero with Big Malk on his side. And I'll say one thing: Who the fuck's Tyler Rust? Why do I care about him? And uh, that's the other thing. If you were gonna sign somebody, you would have done uh, um. Someone other than Tyler Ross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyone but Tyler Ross, right? <laughs> Anyone but. Think. That's what you would think, right? Yeah. Um, but of course not. That's not how this works. Jeez. Uh, Sorry. Right, there's so much to go through with NXT this week. It was a lot of shit. Um, so, yeah, but like, uh, is Malcolm Bivens even a good manager? Like, is he. You, even you, worth you don't even at? know because he hasn't been there for that long. The only, the only person that. But the only team that he had was the Indian guys. That was it. Yeah, yeah, it was. So they're going to NXT UK quick. But apparently, he's supposed to be really great on the mic. So you, you we're waiting for him to to 
to pop with that. Okay, Matthew Ryan but he's Shapiro. A, his social media is fucking hilarious, though. I, I give it that. All right, Shapiro. Um, then we had... Uh, to close it off, we had Rhea Ripley versus Dakota Kai, which um, they're doing a great job of building the rivalry between Rhea Ripley and Raquel Gonzalez. Uh, epic feud, actually. I'm really loving those two go against each other. Monsters but, collide. But they fucking they owe Rhea big this year, man. They yeah, re- they do. They, they do. They fucked her over big time. Yeah. Honestly, they owe her. They, she she's she's paid her dues. They owe her big time. Um, this week Dakota Kai faced the nightmare to prove she doesn't need Raquel to win. So we had um, Rhea Ripley versus Dakota Kai. But, of course, during the bout, we had Kai targeting Ripley's arm, which was cool to see. Dakota's known for doing that. Uh, Gonzalez walked out to watch. um, But she ended up watching her friend lose as Rhea Ripley won. And that's when the Texan marched to the ring to confront her rival. Uh, We had a a sweet stare down at the end. But I don't care about any of that shit because you know what I care about? Mercedes Martinez is back in NXT. And I think that deserves a round of applause. Because she managed to say, fuck Retribution. <laughs> fuck Retribution, and she's back. And I think that she will be getting the belt very soon. I think she's taking the belt off fucking uh, of, of, um, Io Shirai. Yeah. Uh, what, do you think, what do you think about the finale to NXT before we move on to SmackDown? What do you think about uh, Mercedes Martinez? And what do you think about the whole Rhea Ripley um, getting fucked this year, honestly? Like I say, yeah, like I say, it's 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 old. It really is. It's old to her because they they really did a number on her for this past year. And yeah, um, they fucked yo, she was on the, the path to stardom. I give you I'll give you guys and you know what? I'll I'll even ask the guys in uh in uh in their group pages. Um more more talented, Charlotte or fucking Rhea. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna go with Rhea. I, I fucks with Charlotte. I think Charlotte's a she's, she's, I, I actually think they're both even. Charlotte's they're, a great they're even, but, you cannot take anything away from but, that. But for me, if I had to go up and down the line, especially regardless of how they their 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 um the in ring work is, I would have to say Rhea is just she she really generally wrestles like she's a guy. Like it's it, it that, that's me. That's just the way I look at it. Right. And I I I I really think they dropped the ball with her. I really think so. I don't know. They did. Well, there's so hope for her to make a comeback. Hopefully, but that, did, that, that did a lot of damage. Hopefully, the payoff comes soon for her. Uh, what's next up? Uh, up next we have SmackDown as we had uh, Universal Champion Roman Reigns defeating Kevin Owens in a steel cage match. The ending was genius. The match was fun. It was it, it was um, crazy with big spots. Of course, the steel cage match. What do you expect? Owens hit a frog splash, pop up power bomb. Uh, quick, quick and short. It was a great match. Uh, but we had Uso handcuffing Kevin Owens to the cage, which caused um, Roman Reigns to walk out um, slowly and without any worry with the win. But I did love Kevin Owens being conscious. Looking at Roman Reigns saying, "If you walk out this cage, you're a bitch." Yeah, I love that, and, and that's what I'm saying. And I love that they. That's kept... great storytelling, man. SmackDown is doing it right. I love the fact that um, that they they actually sat there and put together the idea that leave the the off mic on. Well, well you know the, the 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 camera mic on to tell that story. Yeah. And Roman doesn't it. Roman doesn't go over the cage, which I hate. Cage matches for any any anyway because I'm not a big fan of escaping the cage that way. Yep. To be honest, cage matches you should never escape anyway. You're supposed to stay in the ring to duke yeah. it out and get it over with. Right. The but, point of still cage matches for no distractions and no escaping. But to get Roman to walk out and touch the floor without having to climb over tells a better story. It was a great, great match. I was so excited. Roman Reigns is a fucking oh, him as a heel is what we always wanted. Kevin Owens is showing that he still belongs and he can still put on a main event match any day of the week. Uh, and the ending was just honestly, it was fucking poetry in motion. As as corny as that sounds, it was Kevin Owens conscious saying, "Yo, if you walk out this cage right now, let me tell you something. You're a bitch." And he and Roman Reigns did it with the smirk on his face, and it was great storytelling. Great opening to SmackDown. It got 3 million viewers for a fucking reason, honestly. Which we'll talk about in a second. Then we had, of course, Asuka and Charlotte versus Bailey and Carmella versus Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair in an Elimination Women's Tag Team Championship match. How do these new teams randomly get tag, a tag title Dude, I, yo, I said the same shit. I was like, you didn't even tell a story 
on fucking that's like, social media. That's like, that's like putting all the names in a bingo wheel and going, okay, these two, you guys have a championship match. You For need what? to tell a story about it. And the way you paid it, and the way that they came out, I would have said, okay, maybe. Bailey opened up the ropes for Carmella. But why? Nobody said they, nobody said, Bailey's not supposed to give a fuck about anybody. Why would you open up the ropes for somebody? Right. You're already right. signing them. And then just because two chicks are black, they're supposed to be a tag team? Like, what the yeah, that, that bothered me too. What the really? fuck are we doing here? That bothered me. I said, what I, is I, this? It's lazy booking, man. Lazy booking. You didn't fucking at least try to sell it on social media or whatever the fuck it was. And you could have at least. That match could have, it could have come later on in the night because you could have promoted it that way. Yep. But absolutely. you didn't. But um, yeah. I, I the match itself, especially when it came to um, Bianca Belair did good. Yeah, she did. But I didn't I like, like her the, spine buster and shit like that. No, but I didn't like the the interaction with her and Charlotte during the match, where they were fucking showing off and and, and listen. Both of you guys are supposed to be legitimate spot on wrestlers. Don't be sitting and taunting each other with ass slapping bullshit. Yeah, no, I'm fuck. not a fan of that either. That's true. And you know what? Them doing that fucked up a lot of spots that they had because a lot of the spots that were supposed to be um legitimate work, it looked bad. But then it came on later on to where it, it, it built. The one thing that I was like, really, we're doing this was that fucking. Bianca Belair dragged Sasha to the corner just so she could get the tag. Like, come yeah. on. I didn't come like it. I, 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 told, I told you, I'll be honest with you, I passed through most of this match. This so match was, me, that. Like, this match I, I could have been so much better without the bullshit. My match of the night, though, was Daniel Bryan and Jey Uso. Yes. Holy shit, what a match, man. Daniel Bryan, uh, who announced that his next contract will be part-time. He is... He's closing his career, man. Listen, Daniel Bryan, he's a dad of two now. He, and also, uh, he's a great guy in the back, he's man. He's, the he's, back. A, he's, he's another he's... reason why SmackDown is the way it is right now. In my, in my opinion, Daniel Bryan's like the, the Shawn Michaels of uh, of SmackDown in the back, producer-wise. Like, they the need guy to hire the... us to be like, to make sense of fucking storylines. I mean, honestly. And Daniel yeah. Bryan is that kind of guy. He knows he is, how to make sense. Great, of... And he's the guy to put over the Drew Gulaks and the Andra and the Angel Garzas and the. And well, the Drew Hendrick. Gulak is basically going to be comfortable with the fact that he's going to be a um, a PC guy. So yeah, he's going to be the um. Yeah, everyone's saying Drew Gulak's probably so mad right now. I'm like, no, you know, you know. Here's the thing, right? Um, Drew Gulak is looked upon right now by Vince and everyone as one of the top trainers in the back. Yeah, yeah, he's he's gonna he's gonna be good with that. And he'll be happy with that, believe Hell me, because yeah. that, 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 that's, that's, that's a transition Shit. to a full time produce to a full time. You make it six figures time. not to go out on the road to bump to bump and fucking and kill yourself. Florida, yeah. and you to Disney World, fuck yeah. out of here. Oh yeah, he's happy, believe me. But Daniel Bryan picked up the win here, clearly uh, initiating that we'll probably be seeing Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns at a. Um, uh, for the Universal Championship soon. Uh, that's the seeds that are being planted. Uh, great match. It was fucking amazing. I'm, I, and to be honest, shout out to Uso too. Because uh, Jay Uso is another great performer that's showing that he could really perform under the singles umbrella. Uh, uh, what else happened? We had a few segments for Christmas, blah, blah, blah. And then finally we had the Intercontinental Championship match between Sami Zayn and Big E, the Lumberjack match, which, once again, Angel Garza, I thought you were on Raw, fam. What happened? Uh, Street Profits got into it with Zayn backstage. Sami Zayn also went into Daniel Bryan's face throughout the night. Basically, it all led up to the, the finale, which was Big E becoming the new Intercontinental Champion, two-time IC Champion. I thought it was a really good match. Um, Big E... Uh, Big E uh, is a superstar, and uh, do I think it's too soon that he won the belt? Yeah, because I thought they could have easily built up him getting bullied, and I thought this could have been a Royal Rumble moment, uh, but and I thought it was too soon because out of nowhere he just wins. I like timing. I like I like when it's just the right time for things. Didn't think this was it, but I'm happy they gave him the confetti, the whole bullshit. What do you thought? Lumberjack match, we, we like when certain gimmicks work. Lumberjack max works because... Sami Zayn is a bitch that runs away from shit. Get that. 
Um, I didn't like the way that the 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 progression of the uh, the finish was happening. Fucking, I laugh because uh, Apollo Cruz is he should have been a cornerback because he'll fucking he he would get a wide receiver the way he ran on on fucking right. Sami Zayn. But um, I think the timing was right because of of the you know the the nature of the of the event of the night uh, you know the closing of the year and um Sami Zayn's a guy who should have held the belt for a longer time but yep. I think that I'm hoping with smart booking we can get that the bigger storyline goes because an old school kind of guy that I am, the Intercontinental Championship is the workers' belt that gets you to yes, the, it main, is. Which the gets you the workhorse belt, which gets you to the main uh championship, which I hope that this is what does here. Um I'm not even I wouldn't be upset that he win he doesn't win it at a WrestleMania, but I think that he should get a shot at that time for it. But I also think that um he makes it Legit to say that uh, it's his time to start his push at this moment. He could lose yeah. it at he could lose it at Royal Rumble. He can, right. but right. to show that he is the mainstream star that we've always saw him to be. Yep, that's the way it should be. I agree, and uh, it was a great finale. And Biggie's a superstar, so that'll be. But you know who the superstar is? The real superstar is Roman Reigns. The dude's gimmick is that he's the head of the table. He drew in three fucking million viewers this week. Yeah, it did. I wonder why. Listen, it was working. With, 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 with a show that was already predicted, that everybody saw, that everybody knew what the outcome was. And it still drew more three, than three point three million people. Man, can't knock exactly. it. Can't knock it. When wrestling is done right, wrestling's done right. You can't say just because you knew ahead of time that uh, that you know nobody's gonna watch it. That's not true because viewers will watch and on a on Christmas, on Christmas. Yeah, on Christmas, where people could be with families watching other Christmas movies. They people watch saw, SmackDown. People was watching that. SmackDown. Yeah, man. So it's a big deal. It's a big kudos deal. Kudos to them for doing that, man. Great. SmackDown great. is the A show as we speak. Yes. So um, who's your superstar? Who's your superstar of the week? Biggie. Biggie. I see champion superstar. I, he deserves everything he gets. The man. Uh, the man is. Uh, the man is 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 getting what he deserves, and that's a championship gold. So Biggie for me. I am going to say that. This might not be a uh, shocker, but I think we're gonna pair off this week and say the same thing. Biggie, kudos to you, sir. Superstar of the week. Yeah. Biggie, yep. Biggie gets it this week. Sir, Absolutely. Well. So, guys, once again, thank you for partaking in in uh, in uh, our holiday edition of Facebook Lives, Turbicle Tabloid, and thank you guys for being a part of the episodes and being a part of our show every week listen subscribe share to everybody and tell everybody if y'all want the realest shit in wrestling y'all want the real talk of of guys who really love wrestling and not only that but appreciate what wrestling is on two different spectrums the older and the newer flavor of wrestling is the, the guys here at Turnbuckle Tabloid let everybody go let, let everybody know that you know what you you, you you might not enjoy what wrestling is now, but if you want the context for real people who do enjoy it and will get you back to the flavor, it's Jay Santee and Oski here at Turbo Girl Tablet. Yes, absolutely. My my young my young man, my little brother, thank you for being a part of it as always every year. And yes, sir. happy holidays to you and the family and to all our listeners as well. Happy holidays to you guys as well. For you guys who are watching on the Hello. Facebook Live, thank you for all that. And um as always. Thank you for partaking for this. And um, take a bump. We're out of here. And uh, later. Happy holidays, Mooks. Laters. Turnbuckle tabloid. Three, two, one. Tabloid.